Okay. Uh, freebooters. Uh, I guess <laughs> it's been a while, so this is season two. Freebooters, too fast, too bootious. Um, how are you doing? Right, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, so I've got an idea it's to kick been, off with. It's been a very long time. It has. And there have been people, there was a time when people were like asking for it. And now I think people have kind of like, assumed, like sort of thought that this might be in the archives now, but no, we're back. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it's never gone away. It's, we were just waiting for our studio to renew us. Mm -hmm. There was a lot yeah, of contract yeah. negotiations behind the scenes. Uh, got green, green wall now. Uh, Chris was holding out for a yacht as part of yeah. his contract. So, so also, yeah. it's been so long that Chris's man bun has become like a man plume. Man plume, my plumage. I I, I brushed my hair today uh, because I wanted to just you know like I don't usually brush it because it's curly and awful like that. So I yeah. <laughs> I've got it up in a yeah. yeah and actually, to be it. fair. When it's hot in the summer here, which is like three days of the year, it is kind of nice to put it up. But it's, yeah, um... no, yeah. Sha shaved head when it's hot, when it like, because I just sort of let my hair grow until I get mm. frustrated with it and then shave it. But well, yeah, well, if there's hot weather, I just shave it and it feels so nice. Yeah, it that, that that is that is kind of nice, but I kind of like the attention of long hair. <laughs> uh... You mean the, the attention the hair gives you? The attention the hair, yes, not the attention I have to give the hair, yeah. <laughs> right, so um, I think one of the things, I've been meaning to kind of talk about this on my channel at some point for some time, and we've talked about it off camera before. Are you green but, walls as well? Sorry. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah just, the green just, walls, yeah, that yeah. was in the oh, negotiations. Was, yeah, 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 yeah nice. I, had to, I had to really yeah. anyway, sorry, sorry. argue for this. Uh, so, um, so we don't talk about linux anymore and we don't even talk no. about linux that much not on camera and no, no. i kind of wanted to address this because obviously my channel most of my views are on linux based videos and there's a lot of people that are subscribed and and, and follow me for linux content so i kind of want to touch base with it but for us like linux is kind of feature complete like i'm running the latest debian yeah and it's Debian stable uh, and I have done now for like three years or something like that and I've no issues uh okay admittedly not all of the software is is as up to date as it might be on something like I, Arch, don't, which... I don't care I don't care no. there's, there's a bit some like I want an up-to-date Mesa for gaming mm. uh, you know that kind of thing and I'm not even sure that makes a huge difference on my hardware um but yeah, no, I don't I think, and, and there's certain software, like I have LibreOffice around. I've actually got it as an app image because I don't want it to update because I don't fucking care. Mm. It's just rope, you know, when occasionally somebody sends me a docx or an XLS, just some, mm -hmm. just so that I can open it. Uh, I don't, I don't want, I, I want that never to update because I don't care about it. You know, it's, mm. yeah. And, and even the software I use, like, I mean, I know web browsers have to be updated. I know the security updates, but you know, in terms of wanting to have the latest software for, for features or whatever i'm 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 past that now i want everything mm. to stay the same yeah and also I with their toys and stuff occasionally but mm. i want the stuff i use to just stay the same but you've you settled on vanilla arch and i settled yep. on stable debian which is kind of almost the 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 bimodal you know two ends points of, the, of, of, of linux also yeah. the, sort of horseshoe theory i think actually works mm. with that there's, there's a similarity between them as well they're kind of opposites but similar mm. yeah i mean I, one thing i do like about debian that is what you like about arch in the converse if that makes any sense which is mm -hmm. i like how debian for um the debian repositories are packaged and you like how the arch yeah. uh, stuff is packaged because yeah. with, with debian they they they're quite attentive, and there's a lot of stuff like telemetry that gets disabled by default and all that kind of stuff. Like the defaults in Debian, uh, which aren't always the defaults of the source code, you know, uh, yeah, upstream. Yeah. Uh, they they are. I like them as a general rule of thumb, um, but I can also understand why why like developers might not necessarily like them. I know that there's been a lot of theming politics over the years because of this, um, but I don't well, care about the themes. Sometimes it just goes far too far. Mm. Uh, I remember this is a long time ago. This is 10 plus, I think maybe more like 15 years ago. Um, the Debian WordPress package 
uh, was an absolute mess. Like they messed around with it. There was a there was a time where they messed around it, with it so much that it wouldn't actually run on Debian. Mm. Like they 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 really fucked around with it a lot. And I think I think they I think Arch is sort of forced upstream to become a bit better. I might be overstating Arch's role in that, but because I think mm. I think most distros fuck around with upstream a bit less now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the the long short of it, particularly for me, is is Debian works as expected. I I did give myself the the license to use flat packs if I need something more updated uh, or app images, and I do use a handful of app images or like uh, pre-compiled binaries. But I I've yet to install flat pack on this latest version of of of, Deb, uh, of Debian, I... which is are we up to twelve or something now. Or... Yeah, I don't want to get into a you know is flat pack good or not, but. A while back, I tried to do as much as possible on Flatpak. I was like, "Let's embrace this. This is this is kind of the way things are heading. Let's try and do." It. So I did Steam on there, and a bunch of my like my browser on there. Um, but it, I remember Inkscape on there. I couldn't get it to match my system theme, and the, there's a bunch. There's instructions on how to do it, and none of them worked. Like there's little idiosyncrasies like that, and it's also no, yeah. No, I think this is probably true for all distros. It's it's. Somehow more hassle than just installing through your package manager. Yeah. And when things go wrong, it's much harder to fix because it's yeah. in it's in the container where you can't quite interact with it, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I ended up just completely getting rid of Flatpak altogether. I think being on Arch helps with that because there you are makes it easier to you know you don't have the thing on Debian mm -hmm. where the way of getting up to date software. But yeah, I, I really I've tried and I really don't like Flatpaks. Yeah, I mean, both Arch and Debian have massive repositories. I remember one yeah. time when I was on Arch, and I set myself a rule where I didn't use the AUR, and I just stuck with, with Arch yeah. stuff. And yeah. I think I might have dipped into the occasional app image or binary, but really, the yeah. uh, the, the standard Arch repositories are yeah. nothing to be sniffed yeah. at. The AUR is yeah. great for particularly like interesting, obscure, maybe super updated, or um, a developer version of a piece of software, but... I never found myself needing the AUR. It was useful there for... There were a few things like um, if I wanted a specific like third-party app, basically. Yeah, third, yeah. Why do I call it an app? Like a third-party application. <laughs> yeah. My God. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I... Yeah, like I'm I'm, I'm done. Like even with Debian... A led, they say like Debian's like... Not, not like out of date, but has older packages, but it gets updated the best part of every two years... So at most they're two years old. Like that's not I think, ancient. I think, that's, I think when you're when you're a newer Linux user, I think you want to update all the time. You want new because you want to. Mm. That's part because Linux users, most Linux users, like you don't come to Linux just because it's going to be better for you in terms of to work as as a as an operating system to host your applications. You, it's a bit of a toy. You want something to play with, right? I think mm. most people who come to Linux, at least initially. You want it to be something. It's a hobby. It's something to mess around with. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, as we settle down on it, like I don't, I don't, I less and less. I, I mean, I still want to play with things, you know, install, mm -hmm. you know, if I hear about, you know, an interesting piece of software, I want to play with it. But, but my, my operating system, I just, want, I just want it to stay as it is and work. Mm. And it's exactly I, as I like I, it. I, I've said to you, like, I, I'm, I'm going to end up on Debian at some point. I think, mm. like it. I can't. I, well, I'm 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 loath to reinstall now because it's you know it's working great for me right now. It's it's hard. It's difficult to re re replace the system when there's nothing wrong with it. But at some point, I think I'm going to end up on Debian. Yeah, just for the. I don't want to update anymore. Yeah, I remember when I when I used to reinstall Nuke and Pave every, every couple of yeah. months. It seems and like <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Now, I think the last when I updated to to Debian, it was because old Deb because because a new stable came out. I'm only going from stable to stable to stable releases now. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even then, Again, I think it's back, like back in the day. Um, I think there, I think there are sort of perfect Linux distros now. I think for a certain user, Arch is perfect. I think for a certain user, Debian is perfect, and you know what others. I think back in the day, there wasn't a perfect Linux distro, so you were always on the like you're always kind of happy, but there was a few you know rough edges or whatever. So you're always on the lookout for something better, which is why we used to, as you say, like nuke and pave and try out new distros. Um, and then Ubuntu came along, which was a perfect, you know, or at least a good enough distro for most people, but never was for me. Yeah. I think I tried Ubuntu, but in that, in that period, I generally settled on Debian. Um, but yeah, Arch was the one where I really felt like, yeah, no, this is it. Like, that's, mm. yeah, that's exactly how I want Linux to be. Yeah, I, I think my first uh, full-time Linux distribution was Fedora Core 6 or 7. 
<laughs> and whereas I got by on it, I it felt somewhat anemic to me. It felt like mm-hmm. that there were there were a lot of things it couldn't do, and and a lot of that was was my own lack of knowledge. Like I was very much yeah. still learning the Linux yeah, place, yeah. and Fedora is not the worst but not the best for a first time linux user right like mm-hmm. it's it's very powerful it's very modern it's 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 very good it's very well put together but also there's a like if you want a home pc in particular like you can tell that fedora's it sort of has an ear towards the enterprise it it feels mm-hmm. very enterprisey oh, yeah. so if you want it for a home machine particularly then when they were very strict on their software licenses mm-hmm. you, you were going to have to do a lot of like rpm fusion and all that kind of I stuff that, yeah. and and ubuntu came along and ubuntu was good and i kind of i really enjoyed ubuntu and then mint came along and mint was where it all yeah. changed for me because mm. whilst mint is 90 percent ubuntu that 10 percent of having mm-hmm. the uh the codex all of the the comprehensive codex installed i didn't know if i needed a different codec for a a dvd for an mp3 for Mm. all that kind of stuff having that out of the box with linux mint which was the first distribution to do that and it also had a lot of things that like small quality of life things really just made it so that you could install linux mint and for most basic computer uses you were it was out of the box ready to go uh, even with Ubuntu, you needed to put in some uh, some codecs and, and bits and pieces like that. Um, and it, that would usually involve visiting a couple of forums or reading a couple of man pages or something like that. But if you're new to the Linux world, that is a lot more steps than than it is I, for I, us I today. This might be slightly unfair to say, but it feel it feels fair to say to say that Mint might have been the first distro to really put the user experience. Uh, as the primary concern, in, yeah. in that, like Debian, Debian's you know it's got its software policy. Debian, Debian feels more like a sort of a social project in a way. Mm. You know, they're, they're very much about free software and being you know very stable and very you know it's it's about Debian. Yeah. Um, Fedora is obviously beta for the next Red Hat. You know, you're essentially doing mm-hmm. free product testing. Um, what was the other business? Uh, Seuss is Seuss. <laughs> yeah, like I, I did try <laughs> Seuss in ni- about nineteen ninety seven when I was very uh, young, yeah. and it was very exciting at the time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was also kind of like, oh, it, it was it was difficult for me, but it was difficult back it, then. So, I, I remember Seuss. Yeah, Seuss was one of the earliest distros I tried as well, and, and then this was back in the day when when you installed the default. Um, of a of a distro, it installed mm. every piece of software possible. So you had like yeah. seven different text editors and like fourteen HTML editors and just like you know which you had back in the day. Yeah. Um, Ubuntu did a lot. Of, I think Ubuntu was the distro. It was like, no, let's trim it down. And the default experience mm. is one text editor, one you know. Yeah. Like, which is Ubuntu, very sensible. I would say Ubuntu is the first Linux distribution. And again, this one might be unfair, which was genuinely comparable to Windows in functionality. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and taking taking a lot of cues from Mac for sure uh, mm. along the way. Because we're um, we're praising a lot never... here, but like, give it, give us, give us twenty minutes, and we'll be absolutely slamming. I was just going to say, Ubuntu's it. never been my distro. I try tried it every now and then when it was when it was you know the hot new thing. Uh, I always ended up going back to Debian and just going like, there's there's, there's too much mm. it does in a weird way. But I think Mint, I think mm. Mint, as far as I can think. I think Mint was the first one that was just like like whatever is best for the user comes first. Yeah, because even yeah. Arch, they make it very clear that like because Arch is simple, but Arch mm. is simple for developers. They yeah. care they care about the developer experience. Um, mm. And that's not to say it's not good for certain kinds types of users, but I think Mint mm. was really the one that put that you know at the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. And I did you did were we looking at this chart from? Of, of Linux distributions, was it from either gaming on Linux or something like that, where it showed all yeah. the changes over time? It was um, it was boiling steam. Boiling steam, that's it. Well, we shouldn't yeah, get those yeah. two mixed up. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Tough war. Um, and the Mint was had a, subs- a substantial segment of the market, but it kind of shrunk over time. Did it, if I remember correctly? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, what it what it was that was that all distros like um fluctuated mm. like ubuntu started very big and then got smaller and smaller over time you know arch mm. started small got bigger over time 
mm-hmm. um, pop OS kind of like you know it's more recent, so nothing, 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 and then has a little blip and then starts to go away. Yeah. Um, but two distros, Mint and Debian, were just rock solid. Like it's just mm. a perfectly like like uh, same same width <laughs> bar all the way. I mean, you know, a little fluctuate, yeah. but like pretty much just straight through. Yeah. Yeah, I like, like what people who like Mint. They just like Mint. People who like Debian, yeah. they just like Debian. They stick with it. Yeah, I think Debian. Uh, I think uh, Linux Mint now. I like the fact that they've turned away from snaps and 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 the Linux yeah. Mint were Ubuntu but without snaps. And I thought that was really good. However, I can't help but think when I install Linux Mint is usually the recommendation I give to people starting Linux for the first time or for more casual mm-hmm. users for people that just want a web browser or whatever. And it's even gotten to the point now where I just show people I walk them through the Mint installation process. And mm-hmm. then just leave it, leave it there. Yeah. So they yeah. know how to nuke and pave. You know, that's all I need to do now. My parents, who were big mint people, they set up a printer without help. <laughs> that, that, I mean, isn't that that's that's game over? That's game yeah, over. Yeah. We're done. Now yeah. I, yeah. with with mint as well, but with with mint, when I do see it installed, the default layouts, I do think that they're maybe doing a bit too much. There's a lot of backupy kind of stuff that they're doing. There's a lot of added mm. stuff, a lot of tools that they're throwing in that I don't think are necessarily. I, I don't. Again, use the word... it's good for it's good for like a you know basic consumer level user. Mm. I think that those are really good things to have. But like for people like us, like if we want that, we'll set it up ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that's probably that a fair out. point. I don't, I don't want it unless I need it. Yeah. But one one thing that surprises me about Mint because. I think your trajectory. I think I think you went Mint and then Mint Debian edition and then Debian, right? That's, yeah. That was sort of your path. Because a long time ago, Debian uh, Mint. This is many years ago. De- uh, Mint introduced De- Debian edition, right? Yeah. And it was around about the time Canonical was starting to do some stupid shit like Unity and you know. I mean, mm. a lot of people who defend that, but from my from my you know, in my opinion, that was that was, those are mm. stupid paths to go down. Hmm. Um, and that's around about the time where Mint started doing Debian edition, and it seemed clear to me that they were sort of that was they were going to move to Debian as a base. Like what that that seemed like the sensible thing for Mint to do, and then they never yeah. actually did it, which is really surprising. Well, the the official line from what I read, because I I I I sort of had the inkling that they might at some hmm. point try and go down the Debian route, um, but the the their official line was always, it's if Ubuntu does something that makes a distribution difficult like maybe they mess around with some licensing or some other why let it go that far because i mean again Mm. this was probably 10 years ago i mean when did is when debian edition Mm. first came out mint debian edition uh i tried it out and i I think um i think i'd used mint a decent amount so i had you know a good i could compare them well Mm. and as far as i could tell debian edition was you know just as solid just as good just as featureful as the normal one i couldn't really see a difference it just seemed if anything a little bit bigger bit better because it was a bit closer to debian so you know mm. a debian approach worked better yeah um, and also as i understand it a bit faster really that's yeah the, i, I, I didn't do any like, why, I why any... maintain the two that, there must be some well, work in maintaining two nowadays i at the time uh i believe the arguments were software third-party software compatibility However, like with things like, so there was a lot of PPAs being used at the time, um, right, and dot, right. dot dev packages. However, yeah, okay, yeah, P- PPAs make sense. Yeah. However, um, and there, and, and as part of the Mint makeup, there were they had a Mint PPA that was was yeah, thrown in. Yeah. However, um, I don't even know what the state of PPA. It's been a long time since I ever used a PPA. I don't think they're a big thing anymore, but I, I wouldn't know really if they were. So I don't see I, them mentioned. I've literally seen more uh, things that go into the sh- sources dot list than I have with PPAs. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think anything anything that would have been a PPA in the past is either going to be a yeah, sources dot list or um, just a plat pack these days, right? Yeah, or an app image or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, I, I suppose PPAs are a bit redundant, but but also one of the things, one of the the, the big noticeable differences with Debian edition, Mint Debian edition, is that. Um, they have the the extended security release of Firefox. Now, I believe that as it currently stands, because Ubuntu just packaged the Snap version of Firefox, Mint have taken it upon themselves to package Firefox mm. as a deb in the repositories. However, if they switch to a Debian base, then they wouldn't necessarily have to do that. 
Mm. But so it might involve at some point less work to do the Debian one than it would do. I, but it seemed like that for a very long time. I'm just mm. maybe some, maybe some Debian person will know and can reply to us. But yeah, I've all, I just wondered why why they've not just switched to Debian because it didn't mm. seem there was anything lacking in the Debian version. There were, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely not. Um, it was a very good implementation. It was. I almost at one point treated it as it's just an easier to set up Debian, like with Debian. Yeah, admit, no, yeah absolutely. Yeah. The the when I when I install the Debian, I usually get the XFCE standard image. There's a whole bunch of stuff I want to add. Some stuff I probably want to take out. It, setting up Debian in in the way I like it does take a good couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mint, out the box, bang, you're good to go. Oh, there's something much. nice. Yeah, it's, if you're using one of the desktops, it's something nice just to have a nicely set up version mm. of it, so you don't have to mess around so much yourself. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I did hear. Uh, I think it was on one of the Linux podcasts that. Um, the reason why Ubuntu has never considered KDE as its primary uh, desktop environment, because obviously they 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 get GNOME and they do a whole bunch of cranky shit with it that you know add in the system tray and all that kind of stuff, and it's never felt consistent to me. It's always felt like GNOME or GNOME with a whole bunch of mods on it, and it never quite felt like at least with Unity. It felt like it was a coherent desktop experience. Whereas, no, for sure. yeah. Yeah. whereas was what they've got with GNOME is is GNOME plus a whole bunch of crap that you kind of feel could break at any moment. I think whereas, a lot of a lot I think sorry, go on, you had more. Yeah, yeah. Um so a lot of people and I've talked about this on live streams and stuff before where with people are thinking like, oh, well, why hasn't Ubuntu used KDE? Because KDE, you can set up KDE to make it look very much like either Unity or oh, yeah. GNOME yeah. or whatever. And 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 it's got all of the out of the box features. KD seems really nice. Uh, I'm always happy with it every time I use it. Uh, the Steam Deck, of course, uses KD for its desktop mode. Mm -hmm. So, and people I know who aren't particular, who aren't Linux people, but are exploring the desktop mode and the the hacky bits of Steam OS, they have no problem with KDE. They have no problem with flat packs. KDE, KDE out of the box, like default KDE, mm -hmm. is very similar to Windows. Like anybody from Windows yeah. is going to be quite comfortable with the UI, I think. And it's got great, and 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 you got the you could just do the little Windows key and then start typing for the application yeah. to search. Oh, see, I think it's... the reason I think the reason KDE isn't isn't it often is not the default for distros is just because what happened with KDE for like they they quite have like once a version is running solidly they quite often mm -hmm. just like right we're starting all over we're starting from scratch you know like we get with KDE four or plasma mm -hmm. was it plasma at that point Pla plasma KDE four like yeah like it took years for KDE four to get like stable and usable when kde3 mm. worked great <laughs> you know, like um and i, th I yeah. think i think it's their tendency whereas gnome was always just sort of incremental, incremental i don't know gnome has had its it releases where it's dropped the ball too no i, I i'm talking pre gnome shell oh right okay at so, that point they were just sort of, yeah mm, the well the thing i've heard and again i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain on this, this is just something that was sort of amused on another podcast was that it's the KD release cycle. So GNOME has a mm. six monthly release cycle. So so mm -hmm. Canonical, Fedora, etc. can bake it into a, a process. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah, I think yeah. with KDE, is it a bit more sporadic or something like that? Now, yeah. as uh, I understand yeah. it, I believe they're shoring up a release cycle. So it mm. may be the case that in the future we might start seeing more. Uh, yeah, if KDE settles KD. down and doesn't 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 throw it all out again to start from scratch, yeah, mm. that that would be. Because I agree with you about GNOME. I, I keep mm. this is another. I mean, as you said, we've 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 talked about how little we talk about Linux now. Now, obviously, with mm. this this has been a lot of talking about yeah, Linux, yeah. but mm. I mean, the reason for that is it it's partly just it's partly I think being on Linux for quite a while. You just sort of you mm. just want to, you, you don't want to mess around with it anymore. You just want to use it. But exactly. I think it's partly the, you know the maturity of. Linux, like I can just, but you know, I just I can use. It. Back in the day, there was there were certain apps you couldn't get. Um, gaming was out of the question, apart from you know mm -hmm. the three games that you could maybe get working in Wine. Whereas now it's all just like any pretty much any app you you know as long as you're not using Photoshop or whatever, it, pretty much any app I want to use, it just it's there and it works. Uh, yeah. Games just I don't even have to think about get, whether a game works. You know, just I assume mm -hmm. it will work with Proton, and it always has. Yeah. So I think yeah, the, the problems have gone away. So I'm just I'm just using it now. Yeah, that's kind of it. Um, I'm I'm a little bit prepared that when when I eventually have to move over to Wayland, uh, I'm I don't know if I'm going to have to ditch XFCE. I'm really accustomed to XFCE. It does exactly. It's it's old faithful, you know, and 
it works. I do, exactly. I do kind of like that, like XFC, XF, XFCE has always been your sort of go to, and I detest mm. XFCE. And like, I'm not, I'm not bringing that up as we've talked about that we, as to the mm. why and, and what. I just find it funny that like you, you love it, perfectly happy with it, and I detest mm. it. It's great. It's like, it's like, I don't know, Windows 98 <laughs> or something like that. And it's just like yeah, the, the best, yeah. you know, best Windows yeah. was Windows 98, I reckon. No, that's the thing, see. For me, it was Windows. I don't like start menus. I don't like the start menu. I don't like the taskbar. I like Windows 3.1. Oh, my dad likes Windows 3.1. But like... <laughs> like like prog, prog Man, open that up, launch what you want to launch, takes up the whole screen. You're like, chaos. Like, yeah, it's chaos. There's Windows everywhere. It's, it's, <laughs> like, I like that the menu never, is just nice. Just I, think what, I think my brain is so fucking disorganized and like non-categorical. If you give me a start menu that's organized, I mean, they are less so now, but they used to be mm. organized by category, right? Like, you know, internet, games, but my brain just doesn't work like that. So as soon as like search based launching came out, that, that's me. And the mm. simplest form of that is D menu. So you yeah, D menu, just type the name of the program I want. And it's, you know, it's organized by frequency. So I'm usually just typing like one letter and then enter. Perfect. That's exactly how I want to launch things. Well, kind of like that's not like that's not dissimilar to how I, I use it. Like one of the first things I do when I set up XFCE, and I don't know why this isn't the default, is I make it so that the start <laughs> menu button on the keyboard is opens up the start menu, it's a search. and then I just yeah. I, I do a little search. But to be honest, my most like I got what, what about seven most commonly used um, applications or scripts are just icons in the taskbar anyway. So I don't even open the taskbar <laughs> that often, to be honest. Like how often am I going to use something that's not a browser? not a file manager not a text editor not a terminal not key pass uh well I no see have... i have the same thing but I, I, it's key combos so like I... so uh, Win windows u opens uh my browser windows y is uh steam you know it's just everything mm. that i launch regularly i mean most of it auto starts but anything that doesn't yeah i've just got a, a two two key combo it's very muscle memory -y. so i don't mm. need you know what's the point of silly clicky buttons I mean, I suppose I could move to, you know, like that. Yeah, like that's that's, yeah. I mean, it's the. I mean, the distance is pretty indistinct at that point, right? Like it really is. Yeah. Yeah. We're arguing about nothing at that point. Yeah. Yeah, where the, the shortcut keys versus buttons on a screen, etc. But I, one thing I do like about the start menu paradigm is that it's it seems it's very space um, efficient. You've got the yeah. little bars down at the bottom, and I I I don't necessarily entirely like the the panel world that we seem to be going in now yeah when i say we yeah. like mac and windows world or to lesser extent gnome but gnome actually makes more sense than the, the windowsy things but like mm. i like having because i've got like two three four browser windows open so <laughs> i like being able to distinguish the two straight there on the taskbar using a decent amount of space and it shrinks in if necessary just it just it it they had it right then and i know it doesn't look yeah. as neat as a as a dock and i is that maybe one of the reasons why docks are quite popular because they they kind of look quite neat because it's all they look very neat yeah and, and and you do the thing usually don't you where you click on the icon and then you choose the window and there's like a uh thing what you call it, a thumbnail of, of the yeah, windows yeah. and stuff yeah but, but that, I, 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 never, I never like that not only is it two clicks but i and this is this is very linuxy the latency <laughs> of the thumbnails is too slow for <laughs> oh, me oh, oh, with you on that Whenever, whenever I used any any operating system with a with a start menu, turn the icons off because they just mm. make it like a load a microsecond slower, and it's like no, I want it yeah. instant. Yeah, I, and that's one of the, again another thing I like about XFCE, but you also have this as well. You can turn compositing off. You can't do that on GNOME. Yeah. You can't do that on Cinnamon. You can yeah, do it yeah, on yeah. on KDE. Although sometimes it, the themes kind of assume that you do have it, so sometimes yeah. the borders around Windows can be a bit like <laughs> yeah. they can blend know, together okay, visually. Yeah, yeah but when, like, when I was on. Before I moved to Wayland, when I was on DWM, I, I, I think I just ran with the compositor by default for a while, and then I was like, why? What, what's the difference if I don't? And it's like it's negligible. It's like when you when you select and drag text in a web browser, it's not as like it's not it doesn't have that transparency, and that's mm. about the only thing I noticed. Shadows, you know, yeah, sh or, or, or no, but, I don't but, care about shadows. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, and it's. This is this is like you hear about this a lot in like the speed running community or the the very competitive gaming world, isn't it? Where yeah. the latency is everything, and I do wonder <laughs> if 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 like Linux was considered more of a a, a gaming platform, whether or not speedrunners would consider running something through Proton or Wine, if they could get the latency of turning the composite off. But maybe the 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 Wine makes it adds latency. I don't know. I'm not like that. I'm not that. Yeah, no, I'm not like... that from what I've read, it seems like it does. It should, but it doesn't. 
I think, I think I, the, yeah. the efficiency of, of, of sort of Linux makes up for the additional layers that you I was going to say quickly, though. Yeah, I was talking to Anjune uh, a bit ago about this kind of stuff. Um, and she very much likes menus because she likes, she has, for example, like she has a lot of emulated games and she wants to browse them. I've never been a browser. I don't want to browse. Like I, 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 I don't, I don't have collections of stuff. So I, you know, I always know what I want to run. If I've got an old, if we've got an old game or playing, I'll install it. It'll be in a folder. And then when I'm done with it, I'll delete it. Or like, I won't keep it around, but she likes browsing, which I understand. Like if you like browsing things, then menus and icons and stuff that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't browse, although admittedly, I don't, I don't even know how much I actually use the menus. I don't <laughs> like. I don't. I don't. Wait, use you'd be better that. off on a Tyler. You'd be fine on a Tyler. I'd be fine on a Tyler. Uh, I've used Tylers before. I like Tylers. Um, I don't even. I, oh, at the I moment, know, every now and then though, because yeah, I, I moved to Wayland and I'm on um, Hyper Hyperland, mm -hmm. um, which is getting in, getting itself into some trouble because the developers are very young and they've got that kind of sense of humour that can appear to be prejudice whether mm. it is or isn't i think is debatable um but yeah so there's that that's you know i i, I yeah well, well, well i'm gonna mm. that. Um, but I, I do i and also it's um it's been very rapidly developed so different wrong different things are wrong with it every time you get an update uh, yeah, um yeah. Little, little things but just like like currently i just get weird artifacting on discord when i move i move my mouse around every now and then there's just a little pink rectangle for a split second <laughs> oh wow <laughs> I don't know why that's come up. Uh, so I do think, should I just go to GNOME? Like, it's just, it's it's so simple. It's so, it is what it is. But it is, why, it's like you say. Why GNOME it. over anything else? Because the thing oh, is, with yeah. like Cinnamon, for example. Oh, you mentioned oh, well, no, Cinnamon. I wouldn't go Cinnamon. Um, I don't like... I don't like distro specific. And I know you can use it on other distro. I don't like distro specific mm. desktops. Stick, I would stick with something that's, you know, designed as for everybody kind of thing. Um, so it would be. Is that even a thing? Ice WM. Yeah, no, yeah. They... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you can still get Fluxbox. Yeah. Fluxbox. There was a version of Fluxbox that you could install on Windows way back in the day. It might have been what, like oh an my open, God, open box. Yeah. Do you remember? And that yeah. was my first experience with Fluxbox. And I was just like, this is weird. With like, It had the slit. Right, mm. it, rather than calling it the taskbar, it called it the slit and stuff. I, back when I was on Windows, I tried a lot of alternative shells for uh, Windows. I never really got, yeah, I never really got on with the um, open box, flux box um, sort of paradigms. Um, so yeah, XFCE obviously out the window. The one, KDE is the... too much. KDE is very much. extra, as the kids might say. So it's like, you know, I like the simplicity of GNOME, but... This, I, I don't know how to put it into words, but it's 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 what you were saying. Like it's simple, but it does quite. Yeah, I was going to say. I think I think one of the design inspirations for GNOME was because it, it sort of came out at a time when it looked like we were going to go towards like sort of convergence devices. Hmm. Oh um, yes, yes, and I think I think they were thinking about touchscreens and phones and stuff like that. And there's a lot of that in the design. Hmm. And I don't care about using it on a touchscreen or a phone. Like I, I want to use it on my desktop computer. I don't want it to be good at that. And it does seem to compromise some things for for a world that doesn't exist. And that bothers me. Yeah, I don't know what the state of GNOME on phones is at the moment. Is does does Plasma, Plasma has a phone interface as well? But isn't it just like haven't they just decided to do two separate interfaces? Yeah, I think, well, I think it sort of rescales. It's a bit like, you know, when CSS sort of rescales for a phone. Like, it, it's sort mm -hmm. of, we, we, I don't think it's a completely separate. I think they all do that now. Um, uh, I was going mm -hmm. to say something. Oh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, the thing. So every now and then I try out GNOME. Just, I'm like, I just want the simple life. I just think that, you know, just it to work like a normal operating system. Uh, the thing that always sends me back is title bars. After being on a Tyler for as long as I have, I can't. I can't reconcile myself with title bars. They are so fucking pointless. <laughs> so is hyper. So is Hyperland the only? Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if this gets rid of type title bars, but I think GNOME has a. Are they not baking in tiling into GNOME? Oh, um, I mean, the, the, there's always in KD and GNOME. There's always like sort of third party, like what do you call them, add-ons, mods, or whatever you can install that mm. claim to do. Because honestly, it's not even. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of what people always say. Like you can do, you can do tiling on GNOME. It's not really the tiling that I care about on on my tiling desktop <laughs> because I'm ninety nine to ninety nine percent of the time I'm using one window full screen 
mm. or two windows side by side, which you can do perfectly well with any kind of um, desktop, right? Yep. So that's not unique to tilers. Um, I'm not really bothered about the tiling. It's it's the it's the lack of decoration and the and the the immediacy for me. I, I don't want any UI. I don't want any icons. I don't want I don't want a taskbar. I don't want a I don't want a system tray, and I don't want title bars. Yeah, title bars seem to be the ones that really do it for me because they're such a, they're such a pointless waste of space. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I do like the taskbar layout because you you do have the title bar which. I suppose, yeah, like, I can see what you mean. There's a lot of wasted space there. The The taskbar at the bottom, I find, is a much more efficient use of it. But the one that really got me was when Gnome used to have a standard, the top bar and the bottom bar. The top bar and the bottom bar, And yeah. then you had the title bar as well, and you as had, like, well, three yeah, bars. Yeah, yeah. And when I you see somebody's was... web browser, so it goes, it would go, like, panel at the top, title bar of the window, and then, like, the tab bar, and then the bookmarks bar, and then... <laughs> yeah. you, you see that when you see people's browsers and they've got like three fucking levels of panels at the top i'm mm. like jesus you've got this much fucking screen space for your browser yeah although actually unity had a solution to this that was kind of elegant and i really kind of liked it was that they put the file edit view menu into the title bar that's that they they, they took that from mac os that's a mac thing uh, it is well. I mean, this it's good. I mean, no, see, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I can see the logic of that. Yeah, if you're going to have a top panel, then at least, yeah, stick the stick that stuff up there. I mean, Un Unity. Mm. I think, I, I think Unity. Because I, I said earlier, Unity was stupid, right? I meant mm. it was a stupid thing to do. I think they actually came up with a very good desktop. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if they developed that in a, like, you know, if, if they'd handed off that, handed that off to a different to a separate organization and just you know mm. said develop this for Linux rather than specifically for Ubuntu, I think I would have quite liked Unity. Yeah, my, my only issue with Unity, but it is the, the big issue, was that it was so distro-specific. Mm. Like, I, I think I fundamentally disagree with you on the Cinnamon side of things. My case in point being that you can get a Cinnamon version of Debian, and that's, like, fire, you know. Yeah, the reason, the reason I don't think... Because I, I do quite like GNOME. I like most of what GNOME is doing. And Cinnamon, to me, seems an attempt to take GNOME and make it like Windows. Take it back to the start menu and taskbar stuff that I don't like. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree to disagree on that one. But on on the point of another flame war, <laughs> I one of the things I don't like about GNOME, and I know that I'm going between GNOME and GNOME like interchangeably because honest to goodness, I can't <laughs> settle on. Uh, no, you I, should say GNOME. Fuck, fuck saying GNOME. But I'm, I've just GNOME, been I've listened to so many links podcasts that GNOME is stuck in my head now. Yeah, but yeah. I I actually genuinely think that there is a useful use that doesn't make that there is a use for the system tray and i know that this is this is this is kind of controversial <laughs> in many ways but this is the flame war of our era yeah so uh, here's here's some reasons i use it and like it i can always tell if the vpn is on so you know i could just glance down there and go oh yeah the v it hasn't like disconnected or something or whatever i'm not raw dogging it by accident or anything it's just mm -hmm. like yeah. okay i can check that um i could check that obs is recording right now uh which i'm staring at an obs window right now so I, it's kind of a mm, but like something like that um i do have my red screen filter on which i guess i isn't necessarily necessary but if i want to turn it off beep beep um, and then there's my Bluetooth, my Bluetooth and my volumes and stuff. And that is really good because, and this is the fucking mind blowing thing, right? I've been using a fair amount of Bluetooth lately because I'm on the, the B-Link mini PC. So it tends to like, mm. you know, like it, it tends to favor Bluetooth based things. Zero issues. Absolutely. Zero. Once, like, once I know how to like use it and what to expect, once you get into the rhythm of, of turning this mm -hmm. on and that zero issues i've been playing flat out 2 with the uh the stadia controller here no issues it's it's a good controller and technically it's free because yeah. they refunded me when they got rid of stadia <laughs> i mean it's a standard controller you'd be able to pick up one you know no it's, a, it's quite a nice controller though it's got the it's got the right layout rather than the xbox layout yeah 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 it feels it feels real nice and uh, i've got you know like bluetooth speakers and stuff like that um and having the little bluetooth thing there so that i can switch the sound device over uh, and I can make sure that the right microphone is on, or I can make sure that the all that kind of stuff. It it's a good little. I'm okay with all thing. of that, but why does it have to be? You've got to admit that, like, yeah, all of those things are useful. All those mm -hmm. things you said are useful, but the, but they're all things you do seldom. 
right? So why mm -hmm. does it have to be on screen all the time, wasting that fucking screen? Why can't it be like either a hot corner or on a key press or something like that? A hot corner would be fine. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Like a, it, 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 the, the thing is, because I've got a taskbar at the bottom, it, it just, it just sits yeah. neatly in yeah, the corner. Yeah, you've got a taskbar, then yeah, yeah. Mm. I, yeah, but for me, you... the, yeah, the, the bigger thing is the taskbar. Yeah, but yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I don't have any of, I don't have any of those. All of those things for me are done. If I want to check, like, I don't have a VPN at the moment, but if I did, I yeah, I'd go to a terminal. I'd just check in a terminal, and everything else is like volumes and connecting things to Bluetooth. That's all on keybinds. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if we've done this in a in a previous podcast, but um, I I just picked up NordVPN in a Black Friday sale a long time ago because I'm not looking for particularly, uh, yeah, I'm not looking for particularly. What's your what, what, what do you use it for? Is it for geo spoofing or is it for a bit of security or geo spoofing? Uh, a little yeah. bit of just like feeling like, I mean, every website you visit, you leave your your IP address with them, right? Mm. So I yeah. like the idea of just like not not leaving my IP address just trailing around yeah. the internet. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Someone explained this really quite well on a, on a post at some point. It's like a VPN, like they advertise themselves as. Uh, a privacy uh, aid, whereas your mm. ISP never does that. So mm -hmm. it's it, a lot of it is like I like hiding my traffic from my ISP because I don't trust my yeah. ISP. Yeah, I, I I don't necessarily trust NordVPN, but like if they get busted for like taking logs or whatever, everyone's going to know about it. It's going to be bad for their business. Well, another thing, because there was there was a period a while back where security experts were shitting on VPNs a lot, saying like people think yeah. they're for security, but they're actually worse, like blah, 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 which I think, I think, I think, I mean, their, their, their points were valid, but I think they were sort of missing the point in a way because, mm. yeah, like you say, you, you either trust your ISP or you trust a VPN, right? Yeah. But the difference is you can switch VPNs a lot fucking easier than you switch ISP. Mm. Exactly, yeah. So, um, and yeah, like a, a lot of it is just like, uh, I know most people in the world who use the internet visit like the, like five websites and that's about it. <laughs> um, and in, in those instances, you probably don't need a VPN because Amazon and Google can work out everything about me, regardless of the VPN. It's much more for like, you know, if someone gives me a shady link, I feel a lot more comfortable clicking on it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I know what just, you mean. I don't, you know, it's just a it's just a layer of discretion. It's not foolproof, yeah. and if I you know needed something foolproof, then I, I'd use something else. But the reason I I used NordVPN other than that I got it in a Black Friday sale was the actual app is just kind of nice. It's very easy. It's a command line app mm. for Linux. Um, it's easy enough to install, and all I got to do is it, you, you you can set all the settings just straight out of the box. There's no faffing around with OpenVPN, which is fine. OpenVPN is great, but like the out of the box experience was great. Like. Um, you know, you've got a good choice of servers. The speed tends to be quite good. All I got to do is some very basic uh, CLI commands to use the the app. Uh, all I've got to do is like it's like NordVPN settings, and I can see all the settings. I can see if it's got the kill switch enabled. If it's does it have a does it have a wireguard option for Linux? I know some of them do. Oh, it may do. I've not used it, but um... you should give that crack because it is um, it's a lot less overhead. I think. Uh, okay, yeah. I, it's a simpler, simpler and more secure protocol, is my understanding. Yeah, yeah, I do hear a lot of people singing its praises all the time, but I, yeah, I just went in for the like path of least resistance there. I do mm -hmm. like having it on my phone as well. I just use the, the normal app on the phone. And also, one of the things about the, the app, the NordVPN app, and this is one of the reasons I kind of like, like NordVPN as well, you don't have to get the app from the Google Play Store. You can get the app straight from the website. You can just oh, download nice. the app and install it. That's and that, cool. that, whenever they do that, that always, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of like, ah, they've got people that know what they're doing, or they're not just <laughs> yeah, sure, doing the yeah. bare minimum. And yeah. um, if I'm connecting to a Wi Fi in a hotel or in a Weatherspoons or something, it's it's again it's an extra sleeve of um yeah no yeah yeah definitely if you're if you're on public wi-fi then yeah i think a vpn is a security thing then yeah for sure mm. and a lot of restaurants these days are doing like order through with your phone and <laughs> yeah, all this kind yeah. of stuff and and oh my god like i know you have not you're not been out for a while but restaurants have fucking changed that you're, you're gonna get you're like yeah no, I, no. I've, I, I, somebody was talking. No, actually, I, I was talking to a friend while they were going to a um, what do you call it petrol station. Mm. You don't have to go into the petrol station. Anymore. No, no, you know, you don't. The fuck? That was yeah, my job back in the day. Was the little dude in the petrol station? That doesn't. You don't need to do that anymore. 
No, Insane. Tesco is, is like, yeah, you just go in. I mean, in a way, card. I'm like, well, we had credit cards back then. Why didn't they do that back then? It's not like we were missing a technology to do that back then, but yeah. Yeah, I think I I think there might have been some sort of technology thingy about it. I don't know. It might have something to do with fees because what how it works when you do the go into the, the the fuel petrol pump is you you bink your card first, and I think it takes out a load of money, and then it refunds you the difference after you've filled uh, up. Yeah. And I don't know if that's that was something that they could have done because you know it's like charge back or something like that. Um, oh, that's a so I, I used to, you know, if people, you know, if people looked a bit poor, I'd undercharge them and stuff. And yeah, yeah. also you got you got the truckers coming in. Also the um, I, I don't want the poli uh, politically correct to, like travelers um mm. would come through, and uh, yeah, truck both truckers and, and travelers would often go like so they bought um so they bought like 150 quid's worth of fuel or in cases it was thousands when they were filling up the whole of convoy but they'd be like uh yeah it's on can you write me the receipt for like 250 and i'd be like yeah sure and like often they just give me a tenner <laughs> i'm like uh, cheers <laughs> i i um paid for petrol with cash the other day and the <laughs> the person behind the till didn't quite know what they what like oh my god it's like what's this yeah they, they're like oh do you yeah, they literally they they had the thing out the like some kind of PayPal voucher. PayPal, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, and 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 I I almost felt like uh, and I don't I don't know if this was me, but I heard a sigh going. Oh, I've got to do the cash bit now. I'm like, <laughs> oh, sorry, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that if it, if I knew it was extra work or something. Um, anyway, oh, we've gone well off topic, haven't we? Um. Yeah, I did have some topics to talk about, but how long you got? <laughs> uh, I've got as long as we need. Um, but okay, right? Should we do other? Yeah, I've, we've got plenty of topics. Like we've, we've. I very. Sort of... I don't want to get too deep into this because it's been a while now. But I did want to briefly mention about you know um, setting up my own Feddy instance mm -hmm. and just like you know how that's been. And honestly, what? Well, so I set up a, a coma, which is the fork of pleroma, um, mm -hmm. and it was ball eight set up. They're all a fucking ball eight set up. Uh, but I'm lo I'm loving being on my own instance. It's a little mm. bit um, it's got some rough edges. It's on a, it's on a VPN, not a VPN. It's on a VPS that's not quite powerful enough for it. So sometimes mm -hmm. it you know it, it will lag out a bit. But I'm really enjoying just it being my own place. I don't it doesn't like functionally it doesn't make a ton of difference. But it's um it's made me sort of think more about curating my feed. Mm. It's made me more aware that like this is this is mine and I'm sort of allowing people to you know thingy on it. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I really, it's been really positive. It's made me re-engage with uh, Feddy, which is nice. Mm, yeah, yeah, I spotted you around. I, I'm still, like, it, it is my main social network absolutely mm. now, and has been for, for a good long while. Every, about once a week, I'll I'll log into something like Twitter or, um, what's the other one? Blue Sky. And Blue Sky is just kind of boring, because it's... <laughs> yeah. It's where all the liberals went from Twitter, and it's like right. That sounds awful. It, it you would hate it more than I do, really. It's just and Probably it's just it like more than Twitter. Yeah, like and it's just like okay, so it's just the boring parts of Twitter. At least mm -hmm. at least Twitter X now is a freak show. Like it's absolutely yeah, like, yeah, no, you yeah. can go over there and just look at the look at the fucking freaks, and <laughs> it's like how right wing's it going to be today? And it's like. <laughs> And, and like, oh, is that a bot? Is that a bot? That, oh, you know, and it's oh, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's, it's, that's it, a it, big it, thing, being on Feddy. Like, it's not that you couldn't do bots on Feddy of that kind, but, mm. people, like, nobody bothers. So mm. we don't even think about it. I don't even have an interaction and think, shit, was that a bot? Whereas if I was on Twitter, I think every... Mm. Even if somebody's DMing me, I'd be like, is this a bot? Like, yeah, yeah. The thing is with, with, with Feddy, I, there is no sniff of a bot... In terms of like the people there are too weird, you know. Like yeah. you'd you'd be able to spot it. Like yeah. there's a there's a kind of like Stepford Wives quality to like Chat GPT content. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, just, sure. And I I do kind of in some ways I do like how unhinged and just ridiculous Twitter is. I don't like ever post there. I don't have a public account or nothing. Oh like no, that. no, like wouldn't want to be part of it. But as a spectator mm. sport, yeah, right. It's just, it's just, it's just horrendous. It's just an absolute mess, and it, and it was failing long before Elon got hold of it. Yes, admittedly, yeah. he's 
I don't I don't even like I don't even know what he's done like he's driving the advertisers away um he's you know spreading conspiracy theories and all this kind of thing but Twitter was only ever we I think we've talked about this on several times now it's not that relevant it's got like no. well like 5 well, million it's monthly users relevant now, because of the influence it has on the media but in terms of people's real lives it's yeah I agree mm. it's, it's never been an important platform for normal people no I don't know anybody now irl that even uses it let alone posts to it uh well, you did a little poll didn't you in in in, in a whatsapp group that we're both uh part of and um, yeah I, I, think it had as, I think we had as many i mean it was me and you but it wasn't mm. a, you know it's only like a handful of like 15 people or something but mm. um i think i think twitter had two users and fed had two users you know? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, at least the Fed, Fed is interesting, and it's ours, and it has its messes, you know, and it has its imperfections. There are things that, you know, but also, like, a lot of people want the Feddy to be a lot of different things, you know? Like, it's yeah. not ever going to be a Twitter replacement. It's not no, ever going to, you know, you. like, it, it's always going to be one of the niche, weird corners of the internet, um, yeah. no matter how, you know, how much people... Some people like you know, there's like the thing about the Fed is there's lots of different people dragging it in lots of different directions. It's just going to end up being what it is, right? It doesn't have that, one. Well, every 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 time Twitter gets a bit shitter, we get mm. an influx of boring liberals from Twitter. Mm. Uh, and my we've talked about this at length, but my fear was they would ruin it, you know. Mm. But they kind of have to conform to the weirdness. The weirdness mm. is inherent now. It's part of the fabric of the place. And if if you can't deal with that, you you've got to go somewhere else. Yeah, and I think a lot of them have gone to Blue Sky and Threads, and yeah, good. That's fine. Like, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. We don't need. We don't need all of. You know, there's room f for everyone. Any it's anyone fine. who wants to go, come. Yeah, apart from you know Nazis, will will can't will you know defederate from you. But mm -hmm. anybody who wants to come, you're welcome to come. But. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, someone, someone, this in one of the Twitter exoduses, someone kind of described this. Uh, they said, "Look, it's like, look, my fellow Twitter people, uh, we got to bear in mind that we've just come from a Starbucks. We're all coming from a Starbucks, and we've just shown up at the doorstep of this lovely little tea house run by a gay couple. And it's like <laughs> we've we've got to make sure that we don't sort of trample every, over everything. And like, I mean, that's that very was very good. thoughtful that's, of them. But like, that's very good, actually. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, hang on. But I do, I do love how like nicely weird it is. I like how chaotic it can be. Um, and yeah, you know, it's never going to be perfect because it's 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 people, and people aren't perfect. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but it's it's you know, I do kind of I do appreciate it. I think I found my Twitter replacement, um, which which is Reddit, um, and Reddit's really? a, a mixed bag, obviously. But because the thing is with Twitter, I liked it was the newsy kind of side of it, and mm -hmm. I don't really you know blue sky i don't even i i'm not on i was on threads for a bit but i'm not on threads anymore threads was just uh, you know yeah i don't I, the blue sky and threads are kind of very similar I, I i don't even know if there's a solid distinction between the two but it eventually i think blue sky eventually got got my sense in the algorithm but there's just nothing interest there's nothing yeah there's nothing that enriches my life on it. It's the same old, same old shit. Um, and I think that, like, in terms of people, like, in, you know, the average person, I think they're giving up on social media. I don't think social media is really what they want anymore. Uh, and I think that when it comes to socializing online for most people, it's going to be in WhatsApp groups and Discord channels and more closed communities because mm. not every thought you have has to be published to the world. And... I think it's just you know the evolution we're, just, we're not really built for dealing with that many people I think like we, we mm. you know it's one of the reasons why I kind of people. why I kind of think that we have such a problem dealing with climate change is that it's just a problem too big to quantify like yeah no I think that's certainly yeah. part of it yeah I mean I mean you know our whole political system is, is a problem as well but, oh yeah there's yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, like, yeah I definitely I definitely think that's part of it. so it's unimaginably large same thing with covid same thing with yeah. elections like any all of these big problems we try and find like rules and generalizations to make sense of it but at the end of the day 
It's chaos. It's all chaos. Well, out yeah, there. and we're also with, with, again with the climate. I don't get too deep into it, but with the climate thing, we, we, we all we're all aware of it. We all understand that it's important. We mm. all care about it. We all want to do something about it. But we can't individually. We can't do shit about it. That's you know. So what the fuck are we supposed to do? We just like yeah. shit ourselves all day. Mm. But, so, but then to take that to elections as well. Like I always quantified this when it comes to like should I tactical vote or not. It's like yeah. well. Would one vote realistically make a difference in an election? And it's mm. like, well, the number of elections. So I always think in America, they've got so many people that yeah. one vote is just so going to get lost <laughs> in the ether like a fart in a hurricane. Yeah. In the UK, where there are a small number of constituencies where it could be incredibly tight, a larger number in the recent election. Um yeah, like, I don't know, like, yeah, I suppose tactical voting, not necessarily, you know, like, you've got to know the lay of the local constituency, but um, it's very, very rare that one vote will make the difference. And even even then, you it, it gets down to things like weighing up, like, do I vote for the Greens who are not going to win my constituency because I want to give them more, you know, you know, more votes for them is more legitimacy for their ideas, or do I vote for Labour? Who will be a bit better than the Conservatives on climate change? Like, which of those long term, you know, mm. in terms of actually fixing the problem, mm. is it better for me to vote for Labour, who are less bad, or the Greens as a long term, you know? And mm. who knows which of those is going to turn out to be <laughs> better yeah. in the long run? Yeah, but also as well as like, if if one constituency is doesn't you know, is, is, is botched as a result of bad strike voting or, or not bad voting, but you know what I mean? It doesn't <laughs> like, it doesn't change the government. Like it, no, you know, no, it, no, it's, no. it's, um, and I was thinking about this the other day. I don't, I know this isn't the Dargoth hour, but Dagoth yeah. hour. but, um, <laughs> I did think like, surely in America, it would be a better system if like the house of representatives chose the president. So you'd vote for the house of representatives and then so it's a more like more like a parliamentary system, essentially. Yeah, what, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. This, this, you know, yeah. It's... Again, it's not the Dagoth hour, but yeah, the, the the possibility having of having a president of one party and a House and Senate of the of you know the opposite party. Mm. So, that's just stupid. You don't want that. Mm. Like it, and it's a lot of the time. It's not like it. It only happens occasionally. It's quite mm. often that you get that right, which means. Mm. You know that government is going to achieve nothing, and we're not even dipping into the Supreme Court, which is a mess all unto itself. But... The Supreme Court, the Electoral College. Yeah, I posted, uh, I posted on Fedi. Um, it was the I think it was the 2016 election because you know you you have um it's uncommon but you have faithless electors because mm -hmm. um, they're not also or at least some of them aren't required by law to vote for who 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 the Democratic vote of their state chooses, mm -hmm. so they can technically vote for whoever they like. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so some of them were voting for Sanders. Some of them, were, I can't remember. There was one that particularly made me laugh. That, that, that just these faithless electors just picking somebody to vote for. <laughs> it's a ridiculous, ridiculous system. I mean, yeah, ours yeah. Is only marginally better. <laughs> yeah, we have to do a parade every time we sign a new law or something, don't we? With the black rod and the yeah. the the parchment on the pillow and everything yeah. and the, you know what, I, mean, what the green was, I think it was um what's the, what's the name the green the green uh, Caroline Lucas uh no the new one oh the new one uh Carla Dania. yeah yeah she was talking about how I I I think I'd heard this before but forgotten about it like there literally aren't enough seats in Parliament for all the mm. MPs so yeah. any any time you want all of the MPs in Parliament they just they they're down the lobbies and out the doors and ridiculous yeah. Like we can, we have bigger buildings, you know. Like <laughs> we can, yeah. I mean, it, it's a very, I mean, it's, well, it's a quietest. It's not as old as a lot of people think it is, but it's, it's a historic building, you know, and it's kind of a cool building in a lot of ways. But you know, if it's yeah. not meeting your needs anymore as a modern or supposedly, well, we're not a modern. We're a fucking theocracy, aren't we? <laughs> got, yeah. Well, the more I think about it, the sadder it gets. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's Every like every time I remember that that Charles is our king now, I'm just like, oh god, for fuck's sake! What Jimmy Savile's best mate? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. well, my god, like, and it's like every. It's, I like the fact that every royal has their own like, uh, their own sort of trademark scandal. It's like so, like, <laughs> yeah, Ch apart Charles. From, apart from Anne, right? I think Anne mm. just sort of does the horsey things and stays out of it. Yeah, she's the one, the one okay one. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, she she seems actually legit, all right. Because apparently, when Scotland are playing rugby, she actually shows up and supports. Yeah, them rugby, yeah. I mean, she's still kind of a monarch with an enormous blah blah blah. So I'm never going to be like she's great. But mm. in the context of they are royal, she yeah. You know. we'll, we'll sharpen the guillotine blade for her. You know, give her a nice, <laughs> give her a nice <laughs> swift one. But it's like you got you got you got Prince Andrews on Epstein. You know, he's he's, he's linked with Epstein. Uh, you yeah. got Queen Liz with, of course, the Panama Papers, and I mean, did yeah. she kill Diana? We'll never know. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ch Charles was good with uh, with Jimmy Savile. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I mean, I'm sure. Like, there's a lot of people that don't like Prince Harry for oh Nazi, and, and not action. Yeah. He he went to the he had the um, the Nazi he, costume party thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, still, you know, I don't know. As far as things that 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 the, the aristocracy aristocracy get up to, like it's not yeah. it's not it's not like showing up to a party in a Nazi <laughs> uniform is not the same as going to Epstein's island, right? Like those are two, in those yes, are, you yeah, know. no, yeah. Um, and then uh, what's what's uh, uh, William? Um, well, no. Before we move on from Harry, there was of course the um, was it was it Harry or William? He was talking about his time in Afghanistan, and. Harry, I think. It's some, it's, he'd like he it somehow injured his penis. Did you? Did you? It was the one of them that released an autobiography, and this was the, the passage that was circulating. Yeah, yeah. Harry, so it was. Yeah. So it was Harry. Um, yeah, he, he he was in Afghanistan and he injured his penis somehow. I forgot. And he was talking about how he was using his mum's favorite hand lotion on his penis, and it was very weird and very edible and very uncomfortable. <laughs> <to read>. oh. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, well, Death that's Mom's I mean, favorite hand lotion on his penis. <laughs> uh, did you see what brand it was? I can't remember. I'm sure he probably did, but I can't remember. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're they're an odd bunch, aren't they? And um, I think Kate um, wasn't a uh, Kate Middleton. Wasn't she the one that made the racist comment about Harry and Meghan's baby? Oh, really? Maybe I don't know if that's been confirmed, but I think maybe I don't know. Are we going to get she, like she put on a list? Who, or something like if we're talking about this, this was this wasn't long ago, and she was she was out of the public eye for a while, and everybody was like, "Where is she? Where is she?" And then they released this photo, AI photo. It was, it was yeah, it was either AI or a badly photoshopped because like part of I can't remember that it was like part of a hand or arm was missing or something like mm. that. So clearly it was. Doctor Dimit, and they released the royal family were like, "No, she's fine. Here's a photo of her from yesterday." <laughs> and it's like, like, why do they do that rather than going, "She's ill"? <laughs> like, what's the? Pro it's not going. It's not going to like crash the stock market if guy can't even remember a fucking name. Yeah, it's 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 like the divine right of kings. They can't be seen to be mortal. It's yeah, like, it's yeah, like it's like it's um, like yeah, maybe it is partly like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like Kim Jong Un takes his shit where him wherever he goes. Like he, sh he shits in a box. It's like you're not having it. <laughs> <laughs> but he is actually divine, so it's different. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, his sister's pretty hot. Like I do kind of think. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Not I do kind of think yeah. that, like, <laughs> if if something happens to to Kim Jong Un, like, I don't know, like you know, glorious new age for North Korea, right? Oh, that could be that could be pretty cool. She is second in line, yeah. right? Like, what was I listening? It must have been some Chapo thing. I was listening to them talking about Trump visiting North Korea, and mm. and he and no, was it was it North Korea? I can't remember. If it was North Korea was trying, but they were talking about him swapping hair, the swapping haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember back wow they got onto that, but it was mm. funny. Yeah, I, the thing I, I not, not to stay on this too much, but I I always, always wonder like, apparently Kim Jong Un is quite the America file, and yeah. Yeah, he does... yeah, he likes American musicals and stuff, right? Yeah, and it's kind of weird that, like, I don't know, like, that we've been, I don't know, I feel the isolationism seems a bit, uh, I don't know. Well, it's never going to be, the isolationism is for the people, isn't it? It's never going to be, for the, like, they have access to any Western stuff they want, right? Mm. I'm sure. Yeah, but, um, anyway, so... You, we were talking about Feddy and your. Yeah, so I only that that was just a quick one. So second um, one. I'm just oh wait, gonna, wait, wait, wait! Hold on, I've got more yeah, Feddy go discourse. Um, yeah. So I have started. I I actually managed to get around to installing OwnCast on my own uh, yeah. DigitalOcean droplet, and I cheated and used the pre the wizard basically. <laughs> um, 
I had to put in some numbers. I had to like put in an IP address. I had to put in a who, who domain. Is that? Where's the VPN? A digital from? ocean. Oh, just oh, they have it. They have an own cloud one now. Own cloud it's, one. It's basically a script that fires up a Debian droplet That's and it cool. installs it for you. So it's not... anyone can do it. it, like with a modicum of knowledge about computers. But like, it's... Right, own cast, own cast. Like, like I said, I installed a Chrome room. Absolute pain in the ass. I've installed own cast like two or three times. It's, it's so easy. It just, mm. it's literally you just run a script. It asks you a couple of questions and it's done. It's so mm. good. It's really good. I love own cast. I. I, I, it is to my shame that I've not streamed more. Um, but actually, that was one thing I, I kind of wanted to, 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 to chat about in this podcast because it's like I'm a bit conflicted, right? It's not expensive to run, and for the number of people that show up, it's it's relatively self sustaining. So I don't need to, you know, tap people up for donations. I don't need to, you know, like it's it's fine. I can mm -hmm. I can deal with the cost of it. However, um, like one thing about it that is kind of, I feel that it's it's it it's difficult like the thing that twitch has that the own cast almost can't have is, is that it has that like discoverability kind of thing like you know you can bring yeah. people in with with twitch in a way that with we own try cast, and do that with own cast by having like the own cast Feddy bot that repeats every time mm. but obviously that's only going to the Feddy, isn't it so yeah so i'm still kind of working out in reality like what i want to do with streaming as a concept um i'm not even at it's not even out of the question that I might just stream to to YouTube as well. Um, mm. I don't even you know like or, or all three you know I could get a, a thing that yeah. spins it off into all three. Um, so I I don't really know and 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 I'd be welcome I'd welcome feedback on this if people because the thing is with with Twitch is yeah it's it's great for like discoverability if I'm playing a game that people are interested in they'll they'll come in. Uh, but the the thing is is with Twitch is the adverts are just fucking awful. Yeah. And it's so like I hate the streamer culture of like donations, donations, yeah. donations. It's yeah, got yeah, that yeah. kind of like vibe of of preachers, you know, like American preachers and stuff. Whereas like you know, I mean, it's, like, it's like a it's like a, it's like a market yes. forecast, but mm -hmm. like for like like a snake oil kind of one, not like five per mm -hmm. pound of lighters because that's actually a good product. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, for something nobody actually wants or needs. Like, exactly, like those ones yeah. where, like, those, those knives, look how this knife can cut this can, you know, that kind of bullshit, mm. is that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I don't know um, what what I want. To, the thing is with Owncast that I do like, and I really, really like this, and I like this with the Feddy, is I can try new things without without fear of pissing off an algorithm. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I've decided to, to, to throw caution to the wind now, um, and I'm probably going to think about doing more stuff uh that i think might be bad for like algorithmic reasons but not give decide mm -hmm. to not give a fuck because what's the worst that's going to happen i was thinking yeah. about this the other day of like oh well should i consider maybe uploading something on instagram because obviously that's like a lot of places and then but then i did get thinking it was like well what happens if if i just end up with a load of instagram followers what so what like <laughs> What, what, what use that? is that to me? Like, yeah. I, am I am I doing multi level marketing or no? It's, so I don't know. I'm in a, a little bit. Yeah, that's in a... not where I go. Like, like, I mean, of course you want you want the people who would be interested to find you. That's the thing, mm. right? It's not about seeking out as many people as possible or anything like that. And yeah, mm. that is the difficulty with Owncast, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I like honestly, I like I like YouTube as a streaming. Um, I like watching streams on YouTube better than I like mm. watching streams on Twitch. Partly because oh, yeah. but the Twitch interface is just terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, yeah. YouTube is a, as in terms of just on the the mechanics of it, YouTube's is is infinitely better. You get to choose mm. your latency. You get it, it down codes it really nicely. Um, yeah, and and also it saves the streams. Like the thing is with Owncast yeah. is is. And I hope that, like I don't want to like I hope this isn't too much of a vanity thing, but like I could spend you know three hours doing doing something quite nice, and then it just disappears into the ether, never to be yeah, seen again. I guess you record it locally, couldn't you, and then upload it wherever. But well, here's but it's the not thing, though, right? The same as it automatically handling it. Not only is it not quite the same, but also I think you can get Uncast to do that though. You, oh yeah, you can. But you the need thing the is, space though is the thing, right? The, you need the, the space. space. And it's yeah. like, do I do? I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna load on a whole bunch of streams to to Hamish's like PG yeah, That just yeah. seems a bit, a bit unfair. Would I do them to YouTube? No one will watch them on YouTube. They'll get like three views. So, I mean, he said, I'll always watch them. <laughs> <laughs> there is okay. So streams, yeah. They, there's like very small, like maybe a dozen or two dozen people who who do watch <laughs> streams after the fact, yeah. and. 
I, I do genuinely feel bad for letting those folks down because they're genuinely like, I, they're the they're interested i don't want to deprive people you know interested people i watched that that hedge wars one that you uploaded the other day i noticed i noticed that on youtube and i was like oh okay. i watched that i was like was this recent this doesn't seem like a recent thing but i watched it all the way through that's a fun hedge wars yeah. is fun hedge wars is kind of fun albeit just worms but um yeah, yeah no I, I i keep every now and then i keep going back and forth about whether or not i want a gaming channel on youtube <laughs> and I'm, I torture myself with it. And I'm like, you know what? Nah, the, the, the small number of vid gaming videos that I really like, I'll just put them on the main channel. It's fine. I think, I think it's not up to me, obviously, but this is just my mm -hmm. opinion. I think, I think you should, the stuff you upload wherever, I think you should also mm -hmm. just upload to your YouTube channel. You've got an audience mm -hmm. there. If they don't like what you're uploading, they can unsubscribe. Um, if they do like it, all the better, right? There's no, mm -hmm. there's no downside to just sticking whatever you fancy on there. Not now. Other than, like, say, other than the algorithmic blah blah consequences blah blah blah, but I, I think mm. I think I mean if if you're talking about getting thrown off YouTube, then yeah, that's one mm. thing. But if you're talking about just losing your audience, I think there's like there's two ways to play the algorithm, right? There's mm -hmm. either be exactly what it wants mm -hmm. or be the opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Those are the um, two yeah. things that are going to do well. So, and both and, can yeah. both can work, yeah. And also. I, I've actually I've lost my audience already. Not like not not all of it, but like a lot. Like we don't talk about Linux so much no more. And I'm not mm. going to just manufacture talking points no, about no, Linux no. Uh, to 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 to. You know, I don't I don't want an audience that badly. I don't I want. Well, yeah, I think, I want... I think for you it's it's more like every two or three months you might think have have something you actually want to talk about to do with Linux, mm. right? And so you do, uh, but you're not gonna. Because I mean, yeah, when I stumble, because I don't really watch Linux content anymore, but when I occasionally dip into it, they are just like manufacturing things. Like you said, they're just, mm. it doesn't and feel genuine. Back in the day, like your channel, other people's channels, it felt like they were talking about stuff they were generally interested in. Whereas mm. now it's, it's like YouTube channels have become, even from the outset, when it's small, they want to be big. Mm. So it's a business from the beginning. So it's like you know, you know, scheduled. Like they're, they're, it's so planned. It's so pre-prepared mm. and so not genuine feeling. Yeah, and that's that's the opposite of what what I I want to do. Yeah. I I have a like a, a it's like a, a a vibe in my head of like of of like sh sh it's like a, it's a sharing kind of vibe. It's like if I'm working on something interesting or doing something interesting, mm. I want to invite people along for the ride a little bit like like um it it's a little bit like when i was at university and people used to just drop by and, and just hang out for no real reason as like, yeah, oh you're playing yeah, some video yeah. games can i watch da, 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 da. Yeah. and it's like I, I kind of want that kind of vibe on like your um you know your notice board thing your pin board thing that you made that video I think you oh, should yeah, stick, yeah. I, I, I would say stick that off on YouTube. I think I think more people are going to find that interesting and 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 kind of cool than than not. Surely, maybe I'm way out of yeah. touch. But I mean, I I watch I watched it. On, you put it on Feddy, didn't you? I just watched it mm. on Feddy. I was like, that yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching <laughs> that. I love making stuff out of new old stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, and and that could be that could be something a direction I go. At the end of the day, I know I need to do like something is better than nothing um mm. not necessarily just for the algorithm but just just for i don't for know you. for me yeah yeah well, i don't I think it's a thing you built up you might as well mm. engage with it right and for a long time i treated it like it was a sacred cow in a way like mm. in, in that like oh i don't want to upset the algorithm and and what undo all the work i've done and it's like well it's like the sun is going to swallow the earth at some point anyway everything i'm ever going to touch <laughs> is going to be undone at some point everything is ephemeral <laughs> so yeah no absolutely yeah you know, I, I, I guess I, th I think my nihilism has won. You know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a good way, you know, like a I hopeful, kind of a hopeful nihilism. A hopeful. Well, someone on Feddy. This is a Feddy status that changed my mind, and I have no idea where it went. Um, which someone, someone just posted in the most simplest of terms. You know, if you just live your life like you go around, you look at some interesting stuff, and then what well, you like, you die. It's fine. It's like yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, it yeah. is fine. Yeah. It's like it's fine you know like it's, in fact that's good that's a good that's a good life yeah yeah just, you go around you look at some interesting stuff you talk to some interesting people yeah. whatever you know you just that's it really like and and to be fair uh i've okay like this is a super tangent 
but I've kind of I've got a um not quite a conspiracy theory, but a thought that has dominated my mind that I can't get rid of. Two years ago, I think it was, uh, an underwater volcano erupted in Tonga. And science, and I was reading a couple of articles about why, how, it, how the impact it has on the environment. So the volcano, of course, going off underwater means that a large amount of steam, uh, an excess amount of steam is, is in the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas. And could be the thing that pushes us over the 1.5 centigrade point of right, no return. Right. So obviously because the earth is so massive and complicated, it takes years for these things to like process mm -hmm. through, but it might actually be the case that we're already done for. We're already like, fucked. Yeah. Yeah. So let's enjoy the, the life that we yeah. have. And, and, uh, maybe, maybe we're not like, I'm not saying like we're doomed. Yeah, no, I've spent I'm, my life savings on yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not, Bet in the farm like, it's, not, it's not even like we should stop look, looking for solutions, but it's exactly it, well, it's, 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 what, it, it's what it should be, regardless of whether we're fucked or not, which is enjoy mm. the time you have, exactly. You know, like tell the people you know them that you love them, I love you, <laughs> yeah, and um, love you. And, and and yeah, and just sort of, yeah, so that's that's kind of like where the nihilism has taken me, and and like, yeah, so I shouldn't like so I mean, what more, if I've got... more, more than nihilism that's kind of like uh, a buddhistic kind of you know live in the moment mm. don't you know all that kind of shit yeah it's like and also like i think we have given internet points far too much power over our lives why yes. do i care that yeah, I've, yeah. I've made it to the 20 well i did make it to the twenty five thousand subscriber mark which if i say that out loud on the internet people are gonna think oh that's not that many it's like well you try and get twenty five thousand. it like, was back in the day it, it was, was back in the day yeah, yeah. And but the thing is, it's like, well, what happens if that goes down to twenty? What happens if that goes down to fifteen? So what? Yeah. So what? Yeah. I mean, first you know? of all, I don't think I don't think I don't think it works. I don't, it's not. I don't think people are going to. I think your channel should be like whatever eclectic shit you want to put on there, mm. um, and then people who like whatever eclectic shit you want to put on there will, you know, enjoy the channel. Mm. I I am subscribed to some Anything absolutely. Else yeah, I'm. I'm like, would you, would you rather? Would you rather upload something that five thousand people are going to love, or upload nothing that ten that fifteen thousand people aren't going to unsubscribe for? Do you know what I mean? Like... Well, there you go. You've nailed it. That's it. <laughs> that's ex that's exactly it. I mean, there's there's loads of mad shit that I love on 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 YouTube. I know that we have a different uh, definition for what we consider small channel because <laughs> yeah. you like channels under a thousand, which admittedly yeah. I do too. But I I like channels that are maybe under a million, which is nowadays considered a, a sort of a small <laughs> channel. Yeah, and yeah. I I really enjoyed the the guy that's crossing in, that crossed England in a straight line. Mm, yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned him a couple Love of times. Love that guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, I've discovered this guy. Oh, did I mention this before? I don't know. This sounds familiar on Dargath Hour. But um, there's this guy who, like, he does a he try he sleeps in car parks in his car, and he like, and and he's like, it's like stealth camping. It's like we're not supposed to sleep here. Oh but yeah, I'm yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah, no, you did mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like he went, he he went off. Actually, you might have just mentioned that. It might have just been a conversation we were having, possibly. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, Go yeah. On. Um, but he he had a uh, he had a uh, video where he went off roading with the guy that, that country singer guy, um, mm -hmm. rich who did the song "Rich Men North of Richmond," mm -hmm. um, which is just like that's so random, and it's like well. It, it was a good video, you know, and it, yeah, and it yeah. showed you the sort of the back and beyond of the States a little bit. And it's just like, yeah, damn, I love that stuff. And it's like, you know what? I wouldn't have thought I liked to watch that, but I did. So I like that. That's one thing I love on YouTube is when you click on a video, like it's like it's something that doesn't seem very interesting to you, mm. but you're like, ah, let's give it a go. And you end up loving it. I, lo mm. I love those. I love those moments. Yeah, there's 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 like one video I watched that talked all about the the weird subgenres of rock, like how many of them there were, and all the silliness. I, I would, one of my favorite rap, uh, YouTube rabbit holes I went down a while ago because one of my common ones is like local news bloopers. That that's one oh, that I, yeah, I love do. Those, I, yeah. I, I love that shit. But uh, I went down for like almost an entire day, um, how to process nettles and turn them into fabric. Oh, I love that. I learned all about it, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, I, it, and when you do something like it, it's made me a bit of like a nettle advocate. I'm like, we should mm. use more nettles. <laughs> like, yeah, these are, yeah these I did that with bamboo actually. Like bam, like <laughs> bamboo. Yeah, no, I'm on board with bamboo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah bamboo's and, uh, a, a wonder, a wonder plant. 
Yeah, and what? What? Well, there was another like rabbit hole I went down. Oh yeah, yeah. John Hinckley, the guy that shot Ronald Reagan, he has a YouTube channel where he does country music, <laughs> and I love it. Like, okay, so the music is not very good. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know enough about music, but it's just a guy and a guitar, and it seems yeah. relatively like straightforward. You know, chords mm -hmm. and things like that. Like he's, but like I think that that and he doesn't. He doesn't even mention it. I think when Trump got got shot, um, I think he did a little video that was very, very like middle of the road. I just hope everyone's okay. You know, <laughs> I know I'm sort of like people are looking to me at this point. I just want to say, you know, mm. I'm a reform guy. I'm all about peace and love now. And and he genuinely like it's a it's a it's kind of a heartwarming story about rehabilitation. Mm. Um, what, why did like, he shoot Reagan? Um, I'm pretty sure it was it was a mental health issue. Um, it right, okay. So it wasn't like, a political. I don't act think it was political. Such. No, mm. I think it was. He was just very unwell, as far as I can tell. Right, right. Um, right. It's kind of but, amazing that somebody who shot the president lived. <laughs> like, he, not happen, only now. not only lived, but was sentenced with a fair trial. It seems and <laughs> has been rehabilitated and is out and is making a life for himself. Like I like, I like that. The judge was like, you shot who? Reagan? Ah, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll get you the care you need. Don't worry about it. Isn't it? Yeah. I think it's like he spent 30 years. 30 years for, you know. I yeah. mean, I'm very bad at working out, like, what someone deserves. You know, like, in those kind of things. Like, Well, um, I think we both, it's, it shouldn't be about punishment. It should be about rehabilitation and, and, and when necessary, yeah. isolating somebody from being able to do more harm, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel and very uncomfortable. In cases like that, just getting them the help that they need. Yeah, I feel very uncomfortable like, puni with... Punishing people mm. seems pointless. On a, on a personal, emotional basis, yeah, of course it may. You know, it's irrational, mm. but, yeah. uh, but a state shouldn't be in the business of punishing people. Yeah, and I, also I do feel generally quite uncomfortable about giving into the, the, the mob. You know, like, mm. there is something I find very scary about mass aggression. Like, well, I don't like it when, um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the riots recently are a good example as to why that's bad, but I don't, I don't even like it when this is gonna, this might sound heartless, but I don't like it when, when there's like a, a prominent court case, like, you know, a pretty blonde girl's been murdered or something, so it's, you know, it's a big news story, and they give the, um, they give the family of the victim a lot of time, and they ask them, what do you want from, what, what do you want to see happen? What do you want to see happen? And I understand why people want to see that and you know i'm not saying that their voices should be silenced but what's good for society and what the family of the victim want are going to be two very different things very different things yeah and i think put, constantly putting that on the news nudges people towards that's what society should do is give the victims mm. of the family what they emotionally require which i i don't think is healthy for society mm. yeah no I, to I totally agree with you and and i i feel a little Sometimes I even feel like it can lead down a road of of like, um, like persecution, right? Like in terms of like finding a group of people to be to be angry at, and then post hoc justifying it and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and you see that you, you obviously historically with black people in the states that was like a thing. Mm. You know, and there would be there'd be a lynching or something, and then they would find a they would like sort of after the fact find a reason or have some sort of flimsy. I'm excuse watching, to um, on. So I'm going I'm going through a phase of watching TV shows that I know to be very good that I've been meaning to watch for twenty plus years, and I'm getting around to watching them. Right, so I've just watched Sopranos, and that was as good as everybody said it was. It's amazing. It's one of the best TV shows I've made. Um, now I'm on Deadwood. Um, mm -hmm. and they just been, and we don't think, you know, unless you're a, an actual racist, we don't think in that we all a bit racist, but we don't think in these terms anymore. Right. So the, the episode mm -hmm. I last watched, um, uh, a, a, a white guy killed a Chinese guy who works for a big, important Chinese guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and back at camp, the debate was, well, obviously a white person is worth more than a Chinese person. So we can't, we can't, you know, give them this white person as justice because you know a white person killing a chinese person isn't as bad as a chinese person killing a white person mm -hmm. and then there's sort of political forces in in the settlement and one's going to make hay out of this by essentially evoking a race riot between the white people and the chinese people because he wants the property that the chinese people currently occupy and mm -hmm. it's 
it's I, I, it's not exactly relevant, but yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing, right? Yeah. It's just mm. yeah. right now you, you've got me thinking about that that meme where you've got the rich guy with a plate full of cookies, you got mm. like the, the the black guy with is it like the black guy with one. No, no. The black guy yeah, with no cookie. cookies, and then you got the white working class looking yeah. guy with one cookie, and then the rich guy is saying, "Oh, that black guy wants your." Cookie. I think. I think in, in in the I think it's Rupert Murdoch, right? Yeah, it's yeah, Rupert yeah. Rupert Murdoch exactly. going, you know, that guy wants your cookie. He's and it's like that to me is modern politics, just like in a meme. Yeah. Like that to me is oh, the most well, accurate yeah. meme. Well, that's that's, that's politics for the last. 300 years i think if not more Ish. the thing is it's like it's so simple why have why have we not cracked it oh no i know i know yeah that that bothers me as well it's like we, we anybody who's on board like, well, yeah so it's so obvious like how is everybody how do people still vote tory i don't understand it yeah it's, it's... Not, not by which i don't mean labor's uh, uh, you know many times better labor's become worse because so many people vote Tory. i've been talking mm. like for the last 20 30 years why do people keep voting tories yeah and and Glim there are like glimmers of of it coming through like people know uh, uh, more people than ever kind of get this idea that billionaires are, are bad yeah you know and it's like and everyone knows oh yeah big multinational corporation like Amazon is bad yeah. but then but the 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 rest of the, the bits following well, on no, don't seem to be the done. telling thing is you get movies made mm. by these big national corporate about mm. how big national corporations are terrible <laughs> and they're the yeah. enemy and they're the ones causing all the harm they're so secure that they can literally villainize themselves in the media and know that it doesn't you know there's no blowback it doesn't affect them at all it's amazing yeah 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 like uh yeah. I, I the barbie movie was a bit it was 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 a bit like that I've, I've not actually got around to watching it yeah but i've heard yeah i enjoyed it like i enjoyed it as a movie mm. Uh, and I think it it made a lot of statements. Well, the way, I, the, way I, the, the most entertaining way I heard it yeah. summarized was uh, Barbie suppresses a slave revolt. <laughs> that is a very interesting way to put to put it. Um, it's, it, it 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 does throw out a lot of talking points that you don't usually hear in 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 mm. certainly in in mainstream cinema. But at the end of the day, it was it was a collaboration between Mattel and what like Warner Brothers or something. It was like yeah. you know it's the most of the corporate movie and. Um, but but there's a there's a smidge of intersectionality in there. I mean like the thing, yeah. Thing. I mean the thing is that, that these things they are the product of a corporation, but they're mm. all they're made by human beings. They're made by people, and mm. yeah. I mean, I, I I'm not. I I think I think Barbie would have would take the shit out of me politically, but mm. that's a separate that's a separate dag off hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's um, yeah. They're definitely quite like you know. It, the, the, I, I mean, the number of vi YouTube video essays that I've re read about, like manufactured authenticity, and yeah, 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 and 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 like how, like the history of Disney. Disney starts appealing to women because women have more disposable income. Now it's uh, mm. appealing to certain minorities because they're they're getting a bit mm. more disposable, you know. And it's like D Disney aren't not, aren't they're not validating your existence. They're validating your wealth. You know, you have become a person mm. in Disney's eyes because you have money. You can buy the merch. Well, I mean, the the big the big fundamental shift in the last five ten years, five more like, mm -hmm. has been um, the intrusion of of p politics into the cultural sphere and the replacement of politics with culture. Mm. Um, and now, like cultural, like man like media manifestations are micro targeted. Everybody just wants to see their own political values reflected back at themselves. Mm. Um, and to the point where, like a show like Sopranos, could could not be made now. Um, I, was, I was listening to a podcast about they were talking about Game of Thrones. Actually, mm -hmm. um, it was it was a Chapo thing, uh, and they said Game of Thrones was the last consensus reality, or the last object of consensus reality in 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 the sense that everybody, whether conservative, liberal, communist, whatever, we all watched Game of Thrones and understood mm. it as the same thing. Mm. Um, and and that was the last thing where that happened. And and they said, like, for example, even COVID, um, anti vaxxers and liberals and we don't even understand COVID. Like there are people who think COVID mm. didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's certainly true in, in media now. You can't just um you can't just make a show that is entertaining and has and has complex, weird, uh, uh, problematic characters in it you have to everybody in a show has to yeah rep represent people's politics back to them mm. um and this is part of a project of 
making us believe that our our choices as consumers are politics and have poli- mm. and, and that we can fix politics through the cultural sphere and through our consumer choices which of course we absolutely can't which is why they want us to believe that but now you get you know every time there's a new gender swapped movie release you know there's a furore about you know on one side this is feminism this is saving the world this is empowering what would you call it's doing none of that and on the other side you know this is the the end of culture this is destroying it it's not doing that either everybody's a fucking idiot everybody that yeah yeah totally yeah it's uh, actually it's kind of interesting. I was reading about the the this uh, game that's made by this um, console game from uh, one of the subsidiaries of ByteDance, um, and it's like China's entrance into console gaming. Mm. And they've kind of got like a, is it like a, like some guidelines as to what they can and can't do? And one of them was um, no no feminist propaganda. And um, I love how like people who you'd usually associate with being relatively quite far on the right suddenly coming at the back of the CCP because it's like, ah, see, they're, 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 they're keeping the cosh on wokeness, aren't they? Is this the one where I saw a snippet of uh, like the lead dev or somebody in the company talking about, oh, they, I can't remember, it ended up being about blowjobs and stuff. I can't remember what, what they were actually saying. It was very weird. I don't have... I can't. Yeah, I don't no. know. maybe that was something else. Mm. Anyway, so right, we were were we on the 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 Fediverse topic? Um, we were. Yeah, I did say I wanted to keep that one short. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I've said what I got to say. <laughs> no, I was. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just mm. saying it's funny. No, um, no. Uh, I'm just going to check one thing. I'm going to turn my camera on and off because I think the the you're there we blurry. go. I think it yeah, went a bit back. blurry. Yeah. yeah. Good. I do have one that's actually now you mentioned console games. A very quick one because this is actually Linuxy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's somebody on the Feddy called Joel, um, and he he likes retro handhelds, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been kind of thinking about. I like the idea of a handheld gaming thing that I can just go and like. I can get away from the computer. I mean, I'm still playing a computer game, mm-hmm. but I can get away from the computer a bit. You know, sit in the garden, sit downstairs a bit. You know, and just play something, mm-hmm. right? Um, good for my anxiety. Um, and you know, I had a Switch, and that didn't really do it for me. Um. Uh, but Game Boys back in the day, I, I kind of enjoyed Game Boys. Um, I'm not a retro gamer. I'm not a very nostalgic person, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, anyway, he bought this thing called a Miu, a Miu Mini Plus, and it's very cute looking. It kind of looks like a Game Boy, obviously with a color screen, backlit color screen, and it can play every old console and 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 computer, so long as you can control it with the buttons, uh, up to and including the PlayStation One. And I was like, that looks cute. And I was like, I kept thinking, actually, I want to, I want to get one of those. And I was like, well, I don't want, what's the point? I don't like old games. I don't like console games. But yeah, I, I eventually gave in because for the first time in about three years, I've got a little bit of money that I can treat myself with, like mm-hmm. 30 quid. So I bought one. <laughs> um, yeah, I've ordered one um, with the intention of just like, sort of rather than it being a nostalgia thing, just find, finding good games from the past that I haven't played yet. Mm. um and playing them so yeah that's my intention so it's called it's called a mio mini plus it's a very cute looking thing uh it runs linux it runs not android it runs actual linux which is really nice and there's, nice. A, there's a custom os for it which is you know also linux um uh, so yeah when that arrives from literally from china i'll have fun playing with that do you know what the chip is in it is it an arm or... uh it's a cor- arm cortex yeah okay cool i like yeah. i like the I, I mean, I have mixed feelings about ARM because ARM, of course, that's NVIDIA's wheelhouse. And yeah, I mean, NVIDIA is not the best. It's, a, it's not the best. It's not the worst or whatever. But one of the things that I am kind of interested about this ARM64 malarkey is that it could actually like st- stop noisy fans. It could be an end of noisy fans. Yes, I would love I would love a passively cool computer. I'm going to drop a mm. going to drop a picture in, in chat of this device because I do find it very cute. Um. There you go. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, I've got to work out how to do this without butchering the stream. <laughs> I mean, people can Google it. I was just sort of to show you, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. a very, it's a very cute looking looking thing. It's got like six hour battery life. You just drop it in your pocket, rechargeable, obviously. Drop mm-hmm. it in your pocket, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to having a little play with that. Nice, nice. I've, ne- I've never managed to see eye to eye with, with. Uh, Port, uh, portable game gaming on a small screen yeah uh, it's t- it, it, to me it's always been either at a desktop pc the vast majority mm-hmm. of the time or 
um maybe on a console but only as casual however over the past couple of years i have been enjoying some mobile gaming but not the same types of games like yeah i suppose I you mean. like like you know like wordle and things like that that i quite, quite yeah, enjoy. yeah yeah I just I, I dislike phones as um actually I dislike I had a, like I say I had a switch and I dislike the switch because it was very uncomfortable to hold. I would mm. my hands would cramp in in minutes in you know like ten minutes because it's too thin. Uh, whereas yeah. I think the Game Boy, um, you know, a game, as a kid with the Game Boy, like I'd play on that for hours and never got uncomfortable. So did you never have a Game Boy or anything like that? No, I never had anything remotely. I guess you I guess you're in that sort of age thingy where it. Because yeah, but me, you know, my age, it was it was very much Game Boys, and then handhelds mm. kind of disappeared for a bit, didn't they? Really, I think so. Before the Game Boy Advance, um, and I only yeah. knew like oh, one true. or yeah, two there was people. Game Boy with Advance, it. and then Color and PSP and all that lot. Yeah, um, and there have been games. There have been. Uh, yeah, I played Pokemon Blue and Red mm. and Yellow on the emulator. Yeah, I never enjoyed it. Not, I... Because I did think I did think I could go back and like you know play Mario, play poke, play all the games that I never really answered. But I've tried to play Pokemon many times and and just I don't enjoy it. Same with Mario. It's like a clicker for me. I quite like it. Yeah, I I, I can't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I like turn based combat. Yeah, but only Gen One. I can't. I want, right. it, it. It just gets silly after Gen One. You start. <laughs> Got like a thousand Pokemon to know the names yeah, of. Yeah, and I did try and grind through the the animated series, but they replaced Ash Ketchum's voice, uh, the the main character, at about season nine or something, or season <laughs> six. And my brain can't <laughs> can't. No, I remember, I remember the it. I remember the cartoon show. It was I was a bit too old for it, but my sisters would watch it, so I'd watch it sometimes. I just enjoyed Team Rocket. I just enjoyed their energy. Yeah. <laughs> they were really yeah. fun. Team Rocket, <laughs> like, I would love to, like, I don't know, like, yeah, their, their energy is amazing. Like, I, I, yeah. more Team Rocket. It's the Team Rocket show, yeah. yeah. They were cool. Uh, I, think, I think Team, they, they came across, like, kind of communists, like, Soviet communists. They had that kind mm, of feel to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, and, and they did a lot of cross-dressing, which... Yeah, cool. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. uh... Cool. But no, right. I, was, I, was telling, I was telling my niece about like because I showed her this thing I was getting. She was like, "That's cool." I was like, I don't, "Like, I mentioned the old, the old, the original Game Boy." Mm. Uh, and like, she was asking about it. I was saying, "Like, yeah, like it didn't have a backlight, so I'd be in the, like if we if we went somewhere in the car as a family, like on the way on the way there, I'd be playing on my Game Boy, and on the way back, I'd sort of be playing it by streetlight. Like, as we <laughs> pass the streetlight, I'd play a little bit, and then we pat and like wait for the next streetlight, play a little bit more." <laughs> <laughs> you could get a little light that that bent oh yeah, yeah no we, we were too poor i had like three games for it <laughs> <laughs> it was tetris 99 percent of the time oh wow i could never i could never tetris panics me i understand that oh it's a panicky it, game yeah it's for a sure. panicky game for sure actually yeah. to be fair flat out two panics me as well I get panicked by get I, I yeah I mean I have anxiety disorder so that's part of it but um so when they so fly out two let's just say yeah. like it's a was it ten fifteen years old that two thousand and four so is it two thousand and four it's that's, old anyway that's the point that's twenty and years ago yeah it was it was using so, GameSpy for its multiplayer right hmm. and GameSpy shut down many years ago. Uh, but the devs updated it very recently. They did a bunch of stuff, and one of the things was they they re-enabled network play, so you can play it online again. And I was like, great. And I went online, uh, and I'm very good at the game. Like, if I join online races, like, nine out of ten times, I'm going to win, right? Mm. Um, but I was just... I got into the lead and just immediately started having a panic attack. I was like, I'm <laughs> just sweating, heart beating, like, really fast. I was like, I've got to finish this race before I fucking pass out. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about flat out two that panics me is when the stuff is all over the road, and it's like, oh, really? and it's like, oh, messy. is is that stuff? Yeah, when it gets messy, and it's like, <laughs> oh, and um, well, because the I, physics is so good. If if there's just some, if there's just just like a bit of a fence on the on the ground, and you go over it slightly wrong, like your car can go off the road because of that. Mm, like, can ruin. It. Yeah, but you're right. Like, I, I appreciate you getting me into it because I have. I've got was it like four hours on it so far or something? Yeah. And... Are you doing the career? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the career. I'm, I'm yeah, doing the unlocks. Yeah, the career's great as well. I think it's a lot of modern games. I think I think they they because because it's got the usual thing of you win races, you get money, you upgrade your car, you can buy new cars. 
but it mm. seems like it's it's doled out at just the right level and modern games either give it too quickly or too slowly i think yeah yeah it's it i, I like it it's good um i definitely have been sticking with the the four wheel drives oh really yeah yeah that's yeah. the 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 control that they have i i'm sort yeah. of in that stage now where i'm working out certain cars are better on certain tracks so <laughs> they do... well yeah what i'll say about flat out 2 in terms of the cars is they're all quite hard to drive compared to most other racing games they're they're tricky to drive like the front wheel drive you know they, they'll do what a front wheel drive car does they'll understeer or whatever mm. um and and you know the, the powerful like rear wheel drive cars the, the back end will come out on corners mm. too much um but I mean, this is true of all racing games, and I think it's far more true of Flat Out too. Is like the harder the the harder to drive the car is, the better the better it is, or you know, the better it is, the harder it is to drive. So, learning to drive the really hard to drive cars is actually really rewarding. But yeah, absolutely, start with the four wheel drive ones where you've got you know, it's it's easier to not fuck up and like work your way up to the to the because the best car in the game is the um, the Bullet uh, GT, mm -hmm. not technically the fastest, but is the best car in the game and it's the first time you drive it it's like how do i make this go around a mm -hmm. corner like every time even even a gentle corner you try and turn it and you just end up like backwards and yeah but you you just over time you get to grips with it and like now i can i can yeah i got yeah i could i could you know i could turn that on a dime or whatever the expression is like that, that mm -hmm. car that car is part of me now <laughs> <laughs> I, I the thing about this particular game some games have it and some games don't is that the cars are actually like substantially different mm, and yeah some some games like the cars are fundamentally like they're little they're the same you know like there's a little bit on mm. cornering there's a little bit in this mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. there i've got i've flipped between two four-wheel drives for different reasons like the weight matters you know some yeah. some courses yeah, yeah, yeah. if there's too much like bumps mm -hmm. a heavier mm -hmm. a heavier car will will deal mm -hmm. will be more controllable on on the bumps and on the tarmac tracks sometimes a front wheel drive is uh, that's a bit mm -hmm. faster might might possibly be the edge that i need because no, absolutely, yeah. if you've got lots of long straights on concrete the four wheel drives are not really the best that they can be weirdly like most even most modern driving games they don't have proper physics they're basically they're hovercrafts with more friction mm. like they don't really model the wheels and what the do wheels are doing on the surface whereas in mm. flat out 2 if one of your wheels leaves the ground you can tell, like, and mm. the car behaves like it should when one of the wheels is off the ground. And you know, when you accelerate and the the the, the weight is pushed to the back wheels, that makes a difference. And when you brake and the and the weight is pushed to the front wheels, that makes a difference. And and Absolutely, that's not yeah. present in in a, in a lot of even modern racing games, which is weird. Yeah, and 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 also for a game that's what about like twenty years old, apparently, like the graphics <laughs> oh, are great. Yeah. Like they, I love the fact yeah. that it's super responsive on my middle of the road computer. But it looks perfectly nice. I would have been fine if graphics had stopped there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's 2000, 2006. Yeah, so, yeah. 18, 18, 18 years no, old game. 18 years old. Wow. Mm. Well, I have to get it a drink. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not as good looking as a modern racing game. Like, we're not making that mm. claim right. But the thing is, it, it, looks, it looks nice. It look, it's not in the... Like the early days of 3D, where it looks, you know, noticeably old. It's like if you squint mm. and you're, it's on a smaller screen, you'd be like, that looks great, you know? Yeah. And the physics are great. Um, I mean, yeah. when I'm driving the four wheel drives, I will deliberately crash into stuff to get the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, can you do that with a rear wheel drive? Because I feel like that would just throw you off the road. Yeah. One of the things, because, you know, I got, I got, I got so good at the game that like winning the races was not a challenge anymore. Mm. Um, so what I would challenge myself to do is to win by destroying every other car. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> so and I would do that in the Bullet GT, which is like an American muscle car rear wheel drive thing. And yeah, I, I, I just, I'm just so I've I've won every race in that game by destroying all of the opposition. Yeah, I mean, if I'm in a four wheel drive and I go to overtake one, I will give it a nudge to be like, oh, just oh give yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. really again in something like. Um, what was the one you were playing on Stadia for a bit? Which is an enjoyable oh, game, but... A grid. The grid, right. Okay, so if you tap the back end of somebody in grid, nothing mm. happens at all. Their car doesn't move at all. If you mm. slam into the back of them, they just sort of like shunt forwards a little bit. 
Mm. Whereas in flat out too, yeah, you can do a, like a proper pit, just the gentlest yeah. tap on their rear end, and it's like whoa, and they go spinning mm. off. Yeah. Oh, but I will tell Which you what though, yeah, high. the the fish tailing. Oh my god, that's I. Ha- <laughs> that's where I panic. Is the yeah. You will. You will. You'll get the muscle memory. You'll get the feel of it, and eventually, yeah, you'll that that what that will happen. You know, very rare. I mean, it still happens now and then, but very rarely be doing that. Yeah. 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 It's um. I, but I do like it, and I'm definitely getting better at it. I I remember when I first played it, I'm thinking this is this is quite a new experience. But um, this is this is gonna sound so silly, but the graphics of a racing game matter to me. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. And because it to me, it's an exper it's it's a it's an experience. I'm not a I'm not a serious racing gamer, so I like a good it. For me, racing games scratch an itch. And yeah. there's a few things yeah. that need to be satisfied. Obviously, it needs to run smoothly because a racing game that doesn't run smoothly is mm-hmm. just awful. And it needs to like it needs to have an ambiance. Um, yeah, yeah. And 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 flat out too sort of ticks all those buttons. And it's nice that it just it just seems to run. It's, it it hasn't missed a beat on a modern computer. So I think another thing I think it's to do with the ambi- ambiance. Um, modern games are either like very like racing tracky boring mm. or very like quirky silly and mm. i think flat out 2 has got it's it's in a good the good sort of middle ground where yeah it's got like like some of the tracks are in a woodland and they feel woodlandsy they, like it yeah. feels like the woodlands and, and, and they make use of that environment like they feel distinct and some are yeah in farmland some are racetracks some are roads but they all they they make use of those environments better than i think a lot of games do yeah absolutely and and you're right you're definitely right about the like if something's too arcadey it feels it doesn't feel like you're driving a car it feels like um, yeah yeah it feels like beat saber or something you know like yeah yeah no exactly yeah and the arcadiness in flat out too is the whole nitro system right where yeah you are given nitro you just press the button and you go faster and you're mm. given nitro when you either do jump right you're in the air or where you crash through scenery or crash into another car so there's sort of like mm. a risk reward thing with the nitro which is nice yeah yeah and there there are bits of a map there's one one map i think it's one of the um the like the the uh aqueduct kind of map where canal. the canal that's the one yeah yeah where you, where you could there's you got the the finish line right there and then you can yeah. do a jump towards it and if you've got no nitro you can do it and then it gives you the nitro just as you're like in the air <laughs> yeah. and then you could it yeah, gives yeah. you that extra bit of usually <laughs> you, you've either won or good. lost the race at that point but like to go over yeah. the finish line with the fucking <laughs> yeah 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 i think it does a good job mm. of feeling you know, realistic mm. in, in big inverted commas you know re- it feels real it feels physically mm. and at the same time very cinematic like sometimes mm. when you crash even if it loses you with the race, it's like such a spectacular, like you're rolling and rolling and rolling. And you're like, that looks so cool. Yeah. And and also one of the things that I really do like about it, and I don't think any other game has this certainly as as well, but I don't think I've ever seen it where you like, I, I think I might have like messed up at some point around a track and I was in six out of eight. Most other racing games, I'd quit and restart at that point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of know that. Well, hang on a minute. If you know, if there are only if there are only like five cars in front of me, well, two of them could take out each other at any given point. Like yeah, if two yeah, of them yeah, get yeah. into a bit of a barney uh, yeah. or whatever, you know. So I could squeeze up to second, and seconds enough points to win me gold in the in the cup. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. You'll play it like an actual racing season where, like, yeah. I got third, but like, as so long as I win the last race, I'm good for yeah. Mm. And also, like you say. I mean, it's it has rubber banding for sure, but but usually, but a lot of racing games, if you're if you're at the back on the last lap, it's just a procession. Mm. You're like you just you can't really, but, but because flat out two, so much can go wrong. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, again, yeah, like I... it's a, a traffic cone on the track, and somebody's car tips over, and that takes out the three cars behind it. Like you can you can win no matter how. Yeah, yeah. I never feel safe in first place. Until, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until well. I don't until I'm finished until I'm on the final straight and even then it's and again like, if you're behind it's that re- risk reward thing again it's like mm. I can crash through that fence and you know risk taking myself out and get mm. but if I do it successfully I get a bit of nitro and I can use that to boost you know yeah yeah, yeah and and that's that's like I think that comes into play a little extra with the four wheel drives because you that extra speed is really what you need yeah, in four wheel yeah, drive yeah. on it's the straights yeah. So, yeah. like with a four wheel drive, you can crash into a bunch of stuff, and because you've got the four four wheel drive, you're less likely to spin out. But then you... at the same time, 
when you get to the third class, the last class, you're gonna mm-hmm. like it because the second the second get best car in the game is a four wheel drive car. Nice. You're gonna enjoy um, that. Yeah, and I like the the, the upgrade system's good as well because um, usually mm-hmm. all of the cars will have something deficient in them that you kind of mm-hmm. want to straighten out with the upgrades. The upgrade system is perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little, but it 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 gives you a small amount of economy to like. Yeah, yeah. And there's also some that. there's some of the upgrades the, the the sort of body ones and stuff that there are trade offs like they are mm. they will make your car stronger so more likely to survive the race but a little bit slower and I tend yeah. to you know I, I like going with I like going glass cannon so I'll, I'll I won't take those ones I'll only take the ones that make me faster yeah yeah some of them yeah like will reduce the strength of it as well and and yeah 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 some of the opposite yeah, yeah the, like the, the bigger nitro tanks will make it like less strong but yeah. It gives you the yeah great game. It, I, th- I well, still it, think it's the best. It's the best racing game. It's certainly on that track. Uh, pun not intended. No. Uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah, like it. It it could very well end up be. I mean, I don't have a strong favorite racing game. Uh, well, I, yeah, actually, like, weird though. Before flat out two for me, it was wipeout. Because again, oh, that yeah. had that that just feeling of just when you just nail a circuit. You just mm. perfect it. It feels so. It feels transcendent. Mm. See, I, mean, I, like, I don't think either of us are, like. We're not car people. This isn't about being car people. Mm. It's just there's something kind of zen about racing games. Yeah, it scratches a very visceral itch to me. Like mm. it's, it's, uh, yeah. I, I, no other game seems to do quite quite yeah, the same way. Yeah. Like it's just like, because I, I, I don't like driving that much in real life. Um, no, so no, I don't ever liked it. I, I, I consider it a little bit of a chore. Or, sure, or, yeah, yeah, like it's just it's a thing you've got to do to do the thing that you <laughs> yeah. really want to do, yeah, um, yeah. That being said, I can see the appeal of maybe like driving around a track in a good car, yeah, like in a like a yeah. really, but I that's money that I don't want to spend, you know, because like in my but, mind, my, like I could get into a car crash tomorrow, and if I put a lot of money down on a car, well, that's just mm. that's just gone, <laughs> really. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't really like the like even a ch- like even my cheap car, uh, second hand car, is still a lot of money. To, it's still like the most expensive thing I I own. I think really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm not particularly That's wedded to it other than its sheer utility. But um, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do wish cars were seen. Well, I wish transportation was seen as only utility, and then we'd have better tra- public transport. Yeah, I like trams. I why why doesn't I trams like th- th- it seems like this massively untapped technology that we could the last, have. The last thing I went to with a decent tram system, I'll, uh, this is one point four trams and one point kind of against. Um, was Man- uh, Manchester? I spent a couple of weeks in Manchester with a friend, uh, and the trams there are great. Like you just you just get on them and they're quiet and they just take you where you want to go and it's relaxing and you sort of you're going through the streets so you're seeing the city. Uh, the downside is. They're silent, and I, I got, I nearly got run over by trams so many fucking goddamn times. Mm. But you just don't hear them coming. Yeah, I, I, I wish every small town had them. Just yeah. even if it was just shifting old folks from the top to the bottom of the town. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No where I live, right, yeah. the high street's on a hill. Like you'd really be helping the older folks yeah, yeah, yeah. get out and about. Yeah. I uh, and the how easy it is to lay trams down. Like one of sometimes, um, if I'm like. Uh, so I'm not a, the biggest music person. So if I want something background, if I'm playing some board games with friends or something like that, um, sometimes we'll put on like like a a white noise kind of YouTube video, um, uh-huh. such as like cable cars in Switzerland or something like that, just to like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. It's a bit of noise in the background. It's something you can look at when you're bored. You know, it's it it fulfills the same role as background music, but it's it's yeah. you know, yeah. and it they just look amazing and also like. You can. They, they're so much easier to build the roads. Like they go yeah. up. You can. They they go up mountains, and it's like they seem so easy to lay. They seem very unintrusive when it comes environmentally. Yeah. They seem like you don't batteries. You know, you don't have to worry about batteries because I know when it comes to transport, particularly with electric cars and so forth, batteries are a big deal because yeah, yeah, disposing yeah. them and all that kind of stuff. So things with less batteries, that's good. You also um, don't interfere with um, like like a tram could uh, intersect with a, a cycle. You know, you need a, mm. some kind of warning point, but it can, because they're sort of below the level of you know what you're riding on. You know, they mm. embed. What, I can't say they're embedded into the road kind of thing, aren't they? The tracks, yeah. so you can cycle over them perfectly well. Uh, or yeah. you drive, you know, they don't interfere with mm. roads. 
yeah so you can sort of mix them in with other transportation networks yeah. perfectly well uh, it's it's i feel like with our country in particular we're very bad at infrastructure these days yeah um, hs2 yeah, 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 without a doubt yeah illustrated yeah. that um it was just like the way that it was implemented was just kind of awful and a lot whole, of people the whole sort of western world or you know northern whatever you want however you want to categorize it we're all terrible at that now yeah some some and, better than you know france and germany better than us but yeah, yeah. So, um, sorry i didn't interrupt you there. Uh, oh it doesn't matter but um trams yeah i fucking love them i like trams are great you know, street and cars not... uh, for any americans street cars oh, is that what they call them like Sam, the yeah. thing in oh, I saw. Do you know GeoGuessr? I I got landed in um, Denver, Colorado, and that yeah. looks like a very underrated city. They had trams. Have there. you seen? Have you seen Denver Airport? No. You're in for a treat, right? Well, it's Denver Airport. So, <laughs> when they built Denver Airport, they commissioned a bunch of artists to just just like do whatever, right? Mm. So, <clears throat> outside there is a huge. It looks like fiberglass, glowing statue of a bl bright, kind of blue, bucking bronco horse mm. with glowing red eyes that looks like some kind of fucking demon from hell. Nice. Um, inside, they've got these murals of... Um, oh, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to talk about the whole thing. But part of it is like some fascist super soldiers in like a post-apocalyptic thing and like things about diversity mm. and natural diversity and... Really weird, unsettling murals. Uh, there's a sculpture that's like an open briefcase with a gargoyle coming out of it. Um, and there's a, there's all these conspiracy theories uh, built around ha like the weird imagery and stuff, and those are really nice. interesting. But just just that that horse statue that's outside of it just looks like the whole. It's like a weird art installation. Mm. <laughs> I really want to go there just to see it all. It yeah. looks really cool. I, I totally Denver just seems like a like a really awesome city and I and, and it feels very under celebrated. Yeah, just, no, for sure. Yeah, it just seems from, also uh, they have bike lanes. They have bike lanes in, in Denver. The, prominent in the Hunger Games. Ah. Uh, District one is uh is Denver, I believe. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, so there you I go, don't know, chat. There's 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 the horse, <laughs> if I described it accurately. Okay. Uh I'll give you I'll give you the murals as well. Right. Okay. Um, people at home can kind of see it. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Here's, here's one of the here's one of the mural images. <laughs> another another detail from the mural. <laughs> right. Actually, what what I've done, I've kind of changed the the Discord layout a little bit. Anything you put in chat now goes down at the bottom of the bottom of the screen. Okay. Okay. Oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> Yeah, this, this one. It's, so it's 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 a many panels of of mural. These are just these are just a few of them. Wow. Um, absolutely insane. Like imagine imagine being a bit nervous and going for a flight and seeing all this fucking shit. I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. Right. Um. Have we got more on? Have you got anything on the list? You want to? Uh... I had things, but I think I think. Do you want to go play some flat out too? Sure, but there is one I want to knock out whilst we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put because I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked a little bit about where, the, so for some reason or another, I checked out the Midori browser, um, which used to be bundled, and I think still is, with like most distributions repositories. And I checked in with it, and it's kind of changed a lot, and. Probably not really for the best, if we're honest. Uh, did you actually have Is a look at it? Based on Chrome it? now. It's based on Firefox. In fact, in reality, okay, it cool. just it just feels like a reskinned Firefox. Oh. And it's like so. The Midori browser seems to be an entirely different thing. It seems to have been bought out by this company called Artisan, mm. and it um uh. And and it seems to be just a repackaged Firefox, but with some some of this cloud stuff built in that you can mm -hmm. get an art you can get a subscription to. And I didn't even I couldn't find the prices anywhere. It's like you got to sign. It's one of those services where you got to sign up for a, like a free trial or something in order to work out how much you're going to pay. 
it it seems that they're not particularly forthcoming with the the mm. costs. So I think if I remember correctly, it was originally based on WebKit for the rendering engine, but was it because WebKit was based on KHTML, right? Which came out of KDE project originally. It was their HTML rendering engine, and then KHTML. That... So was it originally KHTML themed, or is it always did it was would it just start with WebGTK? I don't know that far back. Um, in fact, I, I know that Blink's origins are in KHTML. It, I assume yeah. the WebKits are the same as well? Um, Web, WebKit and Blink are the same thing. Well, they were the same thing. They've diverged a bit now, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, they they come from the same, the same yeah. origins, yeah. 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 Um, so, I, I, yeah, I just think, I don't know, that I find that to be a little bit sad in a way that it just, mm, like Midori yeah. just seems to have been. It's still open source, but I don't see how it offers anything that Firefox doesn't It's interesting offer. that there, there are quite a few browsers based on Blink or WebGDK or WebEngine, right? Mm. Um, but it seems that you can take, with, with Blink or whatever, you can take just the engine and put your mm. own UI. Like The browser I use, Cute Browser, is based on uh, web engine um but with firefox it doesn't seem like you can just take gecko and build your own browser around it it seems like you have to take the whole of firefox and then mm. that's it yeah. really Every, just a just a firefox phone yeah and for some reason and i don't entirely know why this is is that even though you can get lots of different themes on firefox it still looks like firefox it's still very yeah. obvious that something's a firefox clone even though it has a different theme um yeah that's kind of what I mean. All the Firefox browsers are just all Firefox. Yeah, and in with fact, either features removed or a couple of features added. That's pretty much. Yeah, it. with with Midori, uh, and I, I don't have any belief that they've taken out any of the telemetry stuff in the same way that like LibreWolf does. I don't. I quite mm. like LibreWolf, and I I use LibreWolf as a secondary browser. But the thing about LibreWolf is, uh, is that a lot of websites need the DRM. Was it that, yeah. that little DRM box yeah. ticked? So LibreWolf, and I know this is by design, so it's not a real criticism of LibreWolf. Um, and I think the kind of people that would want to use LibreWolf as its as as their main browser will be happy to ignore the websites that the factoring that own. in, right? Yeah. But the so one of the websites that I came up against and was the HBO character guide for their for House of the Dragon, uh, because of course mm. typical like Game of Thrones, everyone's got the friggin' same name and everything. So they, they released a handy uh, online guide to to work out who was who. And it requ it required DR it required the DRM thing. And it's like I do wish I do wish what? Firefox had fought harder against DRM at the time. Mm. They because they did fight against it. Um they, they fought against it very hard. But when 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 whoever it is ruled ruled and they said no DRM's gotta be part of the web standard, Firefox mm. just went, oh okay. I wish they'd gone like no we're not implementing it. Because I mean, I know they, they've not got the market share to influence that decision, but I, they, they're still like they're still on like twenty percent, aren't they? On on computers at least. I think it's a lot worse than that. I think it's close. I I because I mean, if twenty yeah. percent of the web, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't have cared. But cause, you know, it was such an obviously bad decision. Mm. But I think nowadays Firefox is down to like two or four percent. Oh, really? Is it that low? It's really bad out there. Yeah. Mm. So I don't. Is that don't taking even... phones? If you take phones into account, it's virtually all phone. You know, there's far more mm. phones than computers, and phones are all basically running some some even even um. No, Safari. Safari is Safari, isn't it? But and every, on iPhone, everything is a wrap around Safari. But Safari yeah. is still WebGDK. It's still the same. A WebKit you fundamental. Mean, yeah. Uh, web, web WebKit. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is actually so, but not if you as take, good if you as take phones out of it. What's their share then? Because I think that's more relevant. To, I mean, I know it's not relevant to the modern world, but it's relevant to Firefox, really. Uh, since they're I not, do. you can get. I mean, I use Firefox on my phone, but I assume ninety nine percent of people don't. Uh, oh, there's a Wikipedia page that'll be vaguely. Um, also, browser network, market share right? worldwide. Oh, Firefox is three point three five. Uh, so that's it's, including it's, phones, right? That's all devices. But that's including so, phones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, underestimation differences in measurement. Uh, yeah, Chrome. Well, Chrome. The latest. Oh, Chrome's at sixty. Uh, sixty-five percent now. Safari is is about twenty percent. Edge is like five percent. 
mm. which is basically Chrome. So uh, all three are Chrome. <laughs> well, sort of. Yeah, mobile. So this the uh, oh, I can't write uh, desktop share. Um. I don't know. I can't seem to find anything. Desktop market share worldwide stat counter. Uh, it is Chrome. Chrome is is like sixty five percent, and Firefox is six point six four percent. Okay, so okay. So oh, that's, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, it is a, a shame. I know that. Is it the Linux Foundation have taken Servo under their wing? Oh, really? I think so. In what, in what capacity? In, what oh, I mean? don't know if it's code hosting or putting people oh, okay. on it or something. Um, I don't even know how Firefox could. And uh, I know uh, how they lost their market share, but I don't know how they could get it back. Uh. I my well they'd have to offer something presumably that the Chrome couldn't. My 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 guess, and it's not ideal, would be that they market themselves as the developer browser, the developers browser. They tried that, and you know there's not enough developers is the thing. I mean the the, the way Firefox at its inception, when it we you know as distinct from um, what was it what was it called the the Mozilla browser before Firefox, Netscape was it? Oh no, Mosaic, Mosaic, Mosaic. Yeah. What, anyway, whatever. Um, it, 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 it was just lighter, right? It was lighter and faster, and it had tabs. I think if they stuck to that and stopped, and instead of chasing um, Chrome's features, I think they, they would have retained or at least not as lost as drastically their market share. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's not just browsers, right? Like Google has sort of gobbled up a lot of the internet. Mm. So. That 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 you know, like Android is going to have had an impact in its its growth as a market share. Uh, Chromebooks are going to have had an impact. Uh, mm. The fall of of Microsoft Internet Explorer is probably going to have had an impact. Yeah. So it, and I suppose, uh, and I, and I think I think its kind of fate was sealed once uh, websites were being designed for Chrome with Firefox as an afterthought, if that. Yeah, but that, that comes after they've lost their market share, doesn't it? You can't well, do was... that until one browser is dominant, really. Yeah, but I mean, at what point would you say that Chrome was dominant when Firefox was at 20% or when yeah. it was at yeah. 10%? To be fair, yeah. So I, uh, it's, it, I hope that it can at least. My, my, I'm not the biggest. I mean, the only reason we care about market share is because we want websites to support it and we want to be able to use it right like i i don't care well, we, want, we, we want we want a browser that's not made by first of all not not made by a profit making enterprise mm. because then you know it's always they're not just making it for us but especially not an ad agency you know an ad, exactly, an ad selling exactly, business yeah. um which firefox kind of are now so that muddies the waters further i think yeah. the only hope for an independent browser now is 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 somebody taking servo and making like out. I, I don't think Firefox can do it. I think it's got to. Ha I think somebody picking up servo and making their own browser around it, which I don't know how practical that is. I think that's the only way it comes back. It it might be. It, it might also be the case though that Chrome start stifling new browsers entering the market. Although they start, sorry, what? start stifling new browsers that are entering the market. You know by manipulating. Web I mean, they're, yeah, they're kind of doing that. I think, I think mm. one possibility though is that because Google's starting to sort of crack down on ad blocking mm -hmm. bit by bit. I mean, it's a very slow process, but they're certainly YouTube's fucking unusable in cute browser now because of it. Ironically, mm. I, I can if I use a browser with a proper ad blocker, I can use YouTube no problem. Yeah. Um, but the problem with cute browser is it does some sort of basic ad blocking. Which YouTube detects as ad blocking, so I get the thing saying you, um, you ad blocking is against against our terms and conditions or something like that. So it literally blocks me from watching the videos. Mm -hmm. um, it's really fucking frustrating. But anyway, yeah. So they're starting to crack down on ad blocking. Um, they're, they're I think they're removing it, or are they getting rid of um, what's the um, manifest? 
No, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but aren't, aren't they specifically? So, what's what's the main ad blocker called? You block, you block, uh, uh, you block origin. Yeah, aren't they doing something to make that not work anymore? I just caught the edges of something to do with that. Uh, something like that. Yeah, I um, this. I mean, this could be where Firefox gets its some of its market share. Yeah, it could be maybe. the ad blocking browser. Uh, yeah. It could be the uh, the thing about Firefox that that I that makes me uncomfortable is that they similar to google will introduce a feature and then take it out in the next release uh F firefox yeah. over the years have brought in some interesting stuff like they brought in video chat well that went um they brought in uh, well they had uh, rss bookmarks they were really good i really like the rss bookmarks yeah 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 got, yeah. got rid of that um, i mean there's, there's also the problem with the company like there's the firefox yeah. um foundation which is non-profit and that's what people say oh it's made not for profit but they're owned by the firefox corporation who are for profit who yeah. certainly engage with ad tech right and there's mm -hmm. telemetry in firefox it's it's not it is made by a profit making thing and they are involved in advertising now so i think i, th I think i don't think firefox can be the solution anymore no we can fork it I, which, I mean, maybe that company i mean yeah, yeah the technology under somebody else yeah for sure yeah yeah, the trouble is though, because a browser requires so much, so yeah. many developers and so much work, that a fork for Firefox, it's not like one person can fork Firefox and keep it going. No. Um, well, what, something I was going to say is like, uh, it's it's a topic we've sort of dealt with in various ways over the years, but I don't really care about the web anymore. I don't really care about this stuff about browser politics anymore because even if we're using an open source, you know, eth ethically made, you know, made for the user's browser, the whole web is fucked. So who fucking cares? Web browsers are these applications that you open up, they immediately use two gigabytes of fucking memory to show mm. some text and pictures. The web doesn't really exist anymore. It's just the, you know, these siloed five sites. You know, I, I, I use YouTube, I use the Fediverse. I don't really visit websites anymore because they've all but disappeared. What's left is fucking what's the what's the shitty blog platform that you have to pay to whatever and it's it's not Substack or medium or fucking medium everything's on fucking oh. medium and like it's just the web is a depressing place now so i i've mm. been thinking i'm gonna get rid of my website mm. or, or just make it a, a link you know a link to all the other places i'm gonna start mm. i'm actually gonna start writing stuff i'm, I'm gonna put it on gemini and go far I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm just going to write things that I'm interested because I'm always on the web. I was nervous about like, what, what's the point of me? Because like, I, I like to work through ideas by writing them down for myself, right? Mm. And I might as well put that up somewhere. But if I put that up on the web, it's like I'm making a statement that like this is worthy of anything, and it's not. It's just my meandering thoughts, and I don't care whether anybody, if somebody reads it and finds it helpful, that's amazing. But it's not what it's for. But if I just put it on Gemini and Gopher, I don't really feel that pressure. So mm. I'm, I'm writing a bunch of stuff. I'm going to put it on Gemini and go for it. And when I've got two or three things on there, I'm just going to get rid of the stuff on my website, make it a link thing. I've also been thinking about, just to like recapture what, what the internet used to be, mm. I've thought about setting up a BBS. Okay. Uh, it's like a community thing. And like, if I can mm. get you involved, that'd be great. And it's yeah, just like, no, you I'm just down. telnet in. Like you telnet in, and it has like maybe like a message board and like a couple of games that we can compete with each other in and that kind of stuff. Like, I think that would be fun, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm. I'm. Yeah. See, when you mentioned this offhand a, a while back, and I, like, I don't think I, I don't know if the web is that dead yet, right? Like, I think the the Feddy is is to me, it's like you, that's the glimmer visit, of hope. Do you visit websites though? Put, putting aside the you know the corporate web apps that we all use and, and Fediverse, mm. like, do you do you? you know google something and go to the website of a, 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 a personal website of a person you don't know and read their stuff does that ever happen anymore okay uh, i'm looking <laughs> at my tabs now and n not really um now i can i can make some 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 asterisk based arguments i can say well i'm on postio i've got my postio window open uh, but Which that's still email. just a, that's yeah. email. Um, yeah. But I do like Postio, and I like it so much more than Gmail or anything like that. Like it's yeah. so dependable. It's so like I've. That's not the web though. That's it. I mean, email is a different is a separate. I know it's delivered via the web often now, but it's that is a separate. Mm. Pro that's one of the protocols that the web swallowed, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could. Just, I'd be relatively as happy on Thunderbird or using email yeah. outside yeah. of the web. Sure. Uh, I, I, but I do like the the web client. 
but yeah okay so it's but it's not essential uh every, everything else is yeah one of the big one of the big webs um i think i and i think i don't think our brains have quite caught up with that because when i think of the web i still think of you know web websites that you visit mm -hmm. and think you know because google used to be good and you'd google something and you'd find somebody's personal website where they they're an expert in it or they're interested in it and they've written about it then you got a lot you know you you follow a few links on theirs you're on somebody else's personal like that that web doesn't exist like it literally does i mean bits and bobs of course but it, like realistically speaking that web doesn't exist anymore the web that we think we're engaging with we're not we're, we're engaging with a few web apps does it make a difference if I tell you that my website has recently hit a million views? <laughs> that's, that's really a... fucking cool. That's really yeah. fucking cool. I mean, I, like, I'm not, I'm not saying these things don't exist anymore. But in our in our day to day practice, how often do we, you know? And your website's this... great. I love. You. I, I I visit your website every now and then and see if there's anything because it, it is a genuine. It's like an old website. Yeah, I. But, it's more, but you know, it's. it's, it's, I, it's a relic. I... Like, yeah I, when when gemini was very new and it was just starting out and uh like we were all playing around with it i really like like that was fun mm. that was really enjoyable for me and i i i got rid of it because the thing is with gemini is that it you, you have to just pay yeah you, you know like you you have to keep a server going right which yeah, is yeah. you know it, it if it's a, it's a little expenditure that is a bit annoying and you know the first round of of, of budgeting that i do if i'm ever in a situation where yeah, i need yeah, to tighten yeah, my yeah. belt it's i think there's also the... there's just there's just a not there's not enough of gemini to hmm. replace the web in that i know it's never intended to replace the web technologically but replace the web in the sense of that explorable thing like hmm. you can explore it two or three times but then you've kind of hit the edges of you know you're butting up against you know the yeah. edges of what you're interested in I really enjoyed doing the little voice note thing. Yeah, they were it. cool. Just yeah, but yeah, I think we should go back to a little. Like, and maybe the BBS will be fun for that kind of thing. Because I was thinking, mm. like, again, like, um, web forums mm. were such a huge thing, and you know, of course, some still still exist, but really, they've been replaced by you know, Twitter, Facebook, Feddy, um, Discord, WhatsApp. Um, they don't. They they don't really exist anymore. You know, in terms of being a broad co practice of, mm. of of people on the. I mean, and of course, web web forums replaced um, NTTP back in the day, right? News groups, mm. news groups were what. Yeah, yeah. As again, the the, the web swallowing another mm. protocol. But at least it was you know people running their own forums for a community of people who are you know. Anyway, but yeah, I, I would like to, I know we can never go back, but I'd like to recapture some of the feeling of that because I miss it. Mm. Yeah, I feel a little bit of that with the Feddy. Yeah, no, you know, me too, me too, but it's not all of it. No, it's not all of it, no. And it's but, not, um, it doesn't have that same explorable, unknown, you know, you never know what you're going to find kind of thing. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I'd like to I'd like to see Gemini get a bit more of a resurgence. And And the thing is with things like Gemini, is these things always go like up like mm, their their route mm. to success is always a bit I wish I wish Gemini hadn't hadn't done the HTTP not HTTP obviously the SSL thing I wish it had been unencrypted yeah so that, I know what you mean you know yeah. retro computing you know low powered retro computing stuff could deal with it and also just it's it's just that little bit of overhead for setting up a server yeah yeah even though it's it, it, like it's it's easier than ever before. I genuinely, yeah, like I do think that the SSL everywhere is not it's it's not necessary. When when the data's static, mm. uh, as it you know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the times on Gemini, it's just static. It's a, it's literally plain text. Um, yeah, because SSL protects you against being essentially against being man in the middle, right? It, it guarantees you are seeing what the server intends. If I'm just reading somebody's you know blog equivalent. It doesn't really matter that much, does it? No. And, and and it's not like there aren't ways around SSL, right? Like mm. it's not like it's it's not like well, yeah, if you're on a, stopped... a public Wi Fi network, that's all out the fucking window. They've got control, yeah. they can inject whatever they like, yeah. Well and also things can be so like it didn't stop spoofing, it didn't stop phishing, it didn't stop Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It, 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 it 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 some people I'm not have... saying get rid of SSL, you know, for no, for you know transactional stuff and when you're supplying you know, if you're supplying your bank details or your credit card details mm -hmm. so it's like of course you want well, anything SSL, that but... requires a username and password you know 
But what made, what made it necessary everywhere is everything being fucking dynamic, everything being like WordPress and like, you know, dynamically generating a static website, essentially, which is another wrong turn we went down. Yeah, well, that I, I'm surprised that we stayed in that wrong turn because surely everything being dynamic has put a strain on the servers that didn't need to be there. Like, yeah. surely having one of those systems like... Um, I don't. I can't even. I'm blanking off the top of my head what they are. But one that just generate. You you put in all the details. It generates the static site for you. Yeah. And then yeah. you just upload that, and you like. Well, that... yeah. For a personal for a personal blog, that makes a ton of sense. But again, for the, the they're not the ones leading. Like, you know, the big mm. the big sites go dynamic. So that sets the sort of the ex the aesthetic expectations almost. So like, even if you're running just your own blog, you want it to look that way. So yeah. you run, you know. We've gone a bit negative. Yeah. We started off nice and positive and saying nice things, and now we're talking about the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, should we should we wrap it up there? And yeah, it's uh, yeah, and play some flat out. Yeah, that one sounds good to me. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, let let us know things, comments. That's what we want. Like, let us know things. You know, it, you can keep your like and subscribes, but like a bit of feedback's always good. Uh, comment sections are good. Uh, we've got emails. Um, you'll find us on the Feddy. You probably already follow us on the Feddy if you're there. Um, toodaloo. Bye bye. <laughs>